Love in South Carolina is Joe Hamilton's Field of Dreams. At Tommy Lee Kinlaw's Barber Shop, you get a haircut in the latest on Joe, all for eight bucks. I knew he was something special when I first saw him playing ball in the backyard in the sweet potato field where we played. As hard as he was getting hit by the, by the bigger guys, he kept going back. He kept going back. He, he'd have a big heart. I just knew he was going to make it. Not, nothing would take him away from the game. Anytime the game was close, near the end, we know if it's in Joe Hand, we're going to win it. Without a doubt. When Joe does something exciting, this place erupts. The roof lifts up the building. <laughs> <laughs> Georgia Tech adores Alvin's favorite son. Because of him, they are rambling. Alvin's finest is the top-ranked quarterback in the land. And next up, North Carolina State. You are looking live at Bobby Dodd Stadium in Atlanta. Now Joe's Field of Dreams. And today is Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets host North Carolina State in an ACC game. Georgia Tech chasing Florida State for the conference crown. North Carolina State driving toward what they hope will be still another bowl game. The BCS standings appear for the first time. And in the top 10, the Ramblin' Wreck, hoping to jump up and have a big money payday at the end of this season. Good afternoon and welcome, everybody. For Gary Danielson, I'm Brett Musburger. Well, Gary, Georgia Tech averaging better than 40 points a game, 516 yards offense. How does North Carolina State deal with this, my friend? All right, Brett, let me tell you, they got to move their life. They're not going to stop it. Let me tell you that, all right? I mean, Joe may stop himself. They're not going to stop. But that doesn't mean it's all lost for the Wolfpack. They're just going to have to score some points. And they got a quarterback of their own, Jamie Barnett, third all-time career passer in the ACC. He can throw it. He's got to make first downs, not try to do it all in one chunk, and try to keep Joe on the sideline. That's their best chance to win this game. I'll tell you one but thing. But I threw you there a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you one thing, though, partner. What a rating we're going to have in the town of Alvin, South Carolina. Go for it, Joe. You're number one. You're the man, Joe. And without a doubt, I think you're going to win it. And we all here in Alvin are behind you 150%. And good luck. I'm Jack Arruda, along with North Carolina State Wolfpack head coach Mike O'Kane. Now, Mike, what do you guys want to accomplish in the early going today? Well, the thing, we've got to control their offense. You're not going to stop this offensive team with Georgia Tech, but if we can slow them down, make them earn their yards, five yards, six yards, make them earn their points, and then on the reverse of that, we've got to do a good job offense of taking what they give us and, uh, and, and move the ball and score points. Now, you're wearing sunglasses for a reason. Yeah, the sun's pretty bright out here, particularly from that side looking back this way, and uh, I, don't, I don't think it'll be a factor early. Hope not. Tell you what happens, though, when it gets down low around 5 or 5 on that other side, it really shines bright over here, so it could affect some passes being called or thrown. Brady's looking for some clouds. Yes, indeed. Bring the clouds <laughs> in to Atlanta, Georgia today. The backdrop of the Olympic City here in the background. You wouldn't believe the construction still going on in Atlanta and the performance of Georgia Tech behind coach George O'Leary. What a job he has done in here with the rambling wreck. Their only loss in Tallahassee, Florida at the hands of the top-ranked Florida State Seminoles this year. North Carolina State won the toss. They deferred, so Hamilton and Georgia Tech will ha handle the ball to begin the game with Bobby Moore out of Northport, Alabama, putting the ball on the tee to kick it off. Des White and Will Glover. Glover the closest to you there at the bottom of the screen, looks over now to the left-hand side, ready to go. the 28-yard line, and so Joe Hamilton will bring it out, and we asked him, Joe, what are you expecting for the North Carolina State defense today? Well, I expect to see a lot of, uh, you know, pressure, you know, from the, uh, you know, they get the different defensive schemes, you know, and with the same personnel in the group that presents a lot of problems for the quarterbacks, be able to tell your hearts and your sight adjust, and the secondary exceptional. 
and the one man they'll be watching is Joe Hamilton the playmaker as good a playmaker as there is in college football and uh, because of the penalty we will do the kickoff all over again Des White made it pretty close to breaking the last one I think George O'Leary very smart in making him kick it over again get another opportunity Des White is a playmaker put it in his hands as often as you can really is a tremendous offense that Joe Hamilton is engineering here for Georgia Tech. I mean, incredible, Brent, this time of the year to not have scored less than 31 points in any game. I mean, I can understand a big average, but to be that consistent, it's unbelievable. So Moore will do it all over again from the 30-yard line this time, and that means that the return men, White and Glover, of course, will come outside of the end zone. They'll be standing around the three or the four yard line now to receive this kickoff and return it against O'Kane's Wolfpack. And Jack Aru down there talking to Michael Kane and I, we were out here at the walkthrough. He was very, very concerned about the sun late in the game. Very detailed coach, looked at everything, went from all four corners of the field to check out the field advantages. to the side Des White from the three bringing it back to the middle another penalty flag is down on the return to the 31 yard line but there is yellow back on the 15 yard line and holding the call against Georgia Tech on the return so let's check our Chili's starting lineups today for O'Leary's rambling wreck, two outstanding tackles. John Carmen is the senior here on the offensive line. Joe Hamilton has speedy targets out wide. We've talked about Des White from Orange Park, Florida, and also keep an eye on number six, Kelly Campbell. Sean Gregory has to be the starting running back because Joe Burns and Philip Rogers both are out with injuries. And Hamilton and Georgia Tech will start from their own 10-yard line. So they should have taken the return on the first kickoff and they'd have been much better served that gamble did not pay off John Gregory is the running back and Ed Wilder whose knee was scoped two weeks ago offsets as the fullback Hamilton calls about 60 to 70 percent of the plays of the line of scrimmage checks off on the first one short drop and a completion for four yards out to the 14-yard line now, defensively for North Carolina State, they're going to go with a 3-4. Brian Jamison, one of their quicker defensive linemen. That means that four linebackers will be in, but keep an eye on the middleman, D'Antonio Burnett, the freshman from Warner Robins, Georgia. And their leading tackler is Brian Williams from High Point, North Carolina. Second down and five coming up for Georgia Tech. And Jeski moves the strength of the formation over to the right he's the tight end for Hamilton who's going to throw again on a deeper drop incomplete a drop ball by Des White at the 25 yard line he should have had it you know Brent Des White probably catches the deep ball as good as anybody in college football but if he has a weakness and we'll look at his scout report is this one right at him it's like Chuck Knobloch throwing to second base you know the easy ones are hard when he turns it, he has a problem. That was right in his face and should have made the catch. John Myers and Kerry Watkins check in at wide receiver. They'll spread the field now with four wideouts, and they will line Hamilton up in the shotgun on third and five. Three down linemen for North Carolina State. Got protection. Fires first down. Put it into Watkins' hands. And the young man from Louisiana. Brings it on to the 29-yard line. Friend, let's take a look at the Dell game solutions for Georgia Tech. You heard Joe say it. He expects some man coverage, and if they blitz, Georgia Tech must make them pay with some big plays. Next, you know, NC State gets off blocks. They're very small. They move well. So if Georgia Tech wants to run the ball like Virginia did against the Wolfpack, they're going to have to stay with their blocks. But for NC State, keep them in front of them. Joe Hamilton and Ralph Friedgen both know that for Joe to win the Heisman, he has to make some big plays, some sports center plays. So try to make him be patient. Maybe he won't, and it'll work North Carolina State's that way. Williams, shaken up on the play, is out, and Rod Johnson, a redshirt freshman, moves into that defensive backfield. Hamilton and Georgia Tech, obviously, will pick that up early on. First down and 10. Run right 
straight ahead for oh maybe a yard or two and nothing more on that play one of the things we saw that time Gary was the ability of Joe to make a first down on third down he shows his experience and Georgia Tech's offense of course the coordinator is Ralph Freachin who does an outstanding job and Hamilton made that 14-yard completion and to he, Watkins. And he does it in so many different ways. That's what makes it tough. You're right. Second down and eight now for Hamilton. And State switches to four down linemen. Penetration. And he hit number six, Kelly Campbell, for the first time today. That is short of the first down. That will leave them with another third down, about one yard to go. Tony Scott, the senior corner, bumped him out. Well, there's some pretty good corners here for NC State. Boy, Lord Harrison and Tony Scott are the corners. But watch this. Right in the middle, this is D'Antonio Burnett, the middle linebacker. Watch what he does. He is just going to stand there and spy for Joe. He's got Joe. Man-to-man -man coverage the whole game. Burnett is the freshman, replaced uh, Edrick Smith, injury against the Texas game, and done a pretty good job for him. They did get it. Just got the first down. Bring the chains over in front of the Georgia Tech sideline here on the near side. You know, George O'Leary, in talking to us about this Georgia Tech football team, said the first half of the season, you get by with talent and what you can do. But the second half... It's attitude. Attitude is the most important ingredient of a college football team. And he hopes that this Georgia Tech team has the right attitude. And, and witness a couple of potential upsets already this morning, uh, early in uh, college football. And Dan playing Michigan, very tough. Gregory bangs for three yards to the 43-yard line. And D'Antonio Burnett, the freshman from Warner Robins, Georgia, making the stop. Well, Joe Hamilton, we all know, is in the run for the Heisman, but he does some things so well, and what makes him good are his great instincts. This comes from playing, you know, sandlot ball, doing everything, basketball. He's a natural leader. comes easy to him. And you know if he has a weakness? <laughs> I don't know if it, what it is, but it's three inches from $30 million. Because if he was taller, he'd be the first pick in the draft. Word from down below in Jack and Root. Brian Williams had his bell run. They've got the corner, Gregory. First down, out of bounds, but he crosses midfield. That's a 14-yard run for Sean Gregory, the sophomore from Homewood, Illinois. The variations of this offense for Georgia Tech makes it so tough. You know, you zero in on Joe throwing the ball. He's got great speed with the wideouts. But, Brent, they're running for 234 yards a game, which leads the ACC. You know, that's great balance, and Ralph Regan's doing a wonderful job. Runs a lot of formations, but very simple plays. Once the offensive coordinator of the San Diego Chargers under Bobby Ross, play fake Hamilton, got great time. Going to come deep down the middle. Intercepted it by Lloyd Harrison. Picked it off in the end zone. A beautiful catch by one of the better corners in the ACC, the senior Lloyd Harrison. Picked him clean in the end zone. Brent, you're not going to believe what I'm going to say, but Des White misjudged this ball. He should have slowed down and caught it in stride. Watch. He's open. Now you have to judge the ball. Slow down. Keep Harrison on your back. See how he stops? Harrison keeps going, and that's why you make the catch in the interception. If Des would have slowed down, Harrison would either run right up his back, or Des White could have had the touchdown. Slightly underthrown, but a good receiver makes you look good in that case. Jamie Barnett quickly comes to the line of scrimmage. They spread the field. And they run right straight ahead. They pound with their running back. And Rashawn Spikes, their starting running back, bolted 12 yards on first down. Jarvis Borum, huge, huge tackle. 6'8", 328. He leads this offensive line. Corn Robinson has to step up as the go-to wide receiver because of the injuries suffered by Coleman and Hamrick. And now Barnett, another senior, coming on strong because his offensive line is getting better, especially that fellow in the middle, Ryan Knutson has made this a better offensive line, the coaches say, from the 31-yard line. And now they use Robinson, swings back outside, makes it to the 36-yard line with Chris Young bringing him down, a member of this Tech defense, which has disappointed the coaches, not this young man. Greg Gathers, the freshman, outstanding with 40 tackles and uh, four sacks. 
Ross Mitchell, though, has to step in. They've already lost two middle linebackers, Miller and Yeremovich. Yeremovich found out this week he couldn't play anymore, and Chris Young just made that stop, and how about that for a vertical leap for a safety? 41 <laughs> and a half inches. Wow. Bobby Crimmins will come and be getting him. Second down and six now from the shotgun. Dropped. So there is the pass dropped by Brian Peterson, the freshman from Clinton, North Carolina. And they lack that experience at the receiving position. All right, Brian, let's take a look for uh, NC State uh, Dell Game Solutions when they have the ball. The theme, make first downs, run the clock, pass or run, it doesn't matter. And when they get inside that 30-yard line, Michael Keane wants points. Get points. Field goal or touchdown, doesn't matter. Georgia O'Leary's only looking for one thing in the first quarter in this game. Tackle, tackle, tackle. And he'd love to have some turnovers. They were good at it last year, but not so good this year. Jamara Clark of the coach's doghouse checks back in at the corner. They throw right at him. Incomplete. Georgia Tech was playing a zone. Chris Young had moved up to cover, and Jamara Clark was off to the left side. North Carolina State told us that they expected a zone defense, and that's exactly what they got on that attempt. Both sets of receivers so far in this game kind of letting the quarterbacks down. That ball should have been caught by Robinson. That was a pretty good throw right on the shoulder pad. Scott Irwin back, and there you see Marvius Hester, number 29, set to return this punt for Georgia Tech. They come hard off the corner, and Irwin does get it off, but that's something to remember. No fair catch. Wait, there's a penalty flag. Did he fair catch and go ahead and run anyway? Let's let the officials sort this one out. As soon as he took off, there was a flag. It's either going to be the halo or a not a very good fair catch signal. And I, I believe it was the halo. It too close to the return. Mm, could have been. Didn't seem to stop him at all. But, no, uh, you're right. Pretty brave catch. Five yard, non-contact kick catch interference. Penalty is declined for staff. No, that's exactly what it was. First and 10, Georgia. ACC crew, James Knight, our referee, is from Charlotte, North Carolina. Didn't give him enough room. Flag comes. He takes off. And pretty good field position coming up for Joe Hamilton. Time out. We better not miss this game. We're going to see Georgia Tech's Joe Hamilton. That guy's a Heisman. I'm telling you, he's a Heisman candidate. Free safety, Brian Williams, returned. He's shaken up a bit. This is the end of that series, and of course it was ended by his teammate Lloyd Harrison on the interception. Now Joe Hamilton and Georgia Tech. This is their second series of the game. Coming out from their own 45-yard line. The option look and the pitch back to Gregory. Huge hole, and Gregory slashes for 12 yards and a first down on the play. To give you an idea of how potent this Tech offense is, Gary, take a look at the numbers that they are racking up and their rank in the ACC. They are dominating offensively. Well, and it's because of that great balance, rushing and passing. Everybody's had so much trouble, trouble stopping them. Fifth-year senior quarterback can do that for you, especially a guy that's been through everything like Joe has. Regions offense, 516 yards a game. And Gregory for a couple more to the Wolfpack 41-yard line and Antonio Burnett uh, already early on this game we're calling his name in yeah. the middle and, and that is you know when they lost uh, Edrick Smith the middle linebacker in Texas everybody was kind of worried about the young freshman having to step in there but you know this is a very active very good tackling defense for North Carolina State and if Georgia Tech doesn't watch out, they'll just keep getting off blocks all day and make that run offense very difficult. Use three wide outs. Dez White is split off to the right side. At the top of your screen, Hamilton bluffs in that direction. They've got him on a stop and go sideline. Overthrowing at the 10-yard line. Check in down below with Jack Aru. Jack? Brent, I want to tell you the legend of the sweet potato patch. Joe Hamilton and all of his friends, they learned how to play football where they grow these. This could be a Heisman sweet potato. <laughs> it was next door to his grandfather's farm. There's his grandfather, Silas, right now. They harvested these on Wednesday. I'm holding on to mine. Yeah, indeed. And Silas, watching Joe play only the second time that Grandpa has been here. Joe Sr. is also in the stands. Now Joe faces a third and eight. He'll call a play from back in that shotgun formation with four wide receivers. Now five go out. Offensive line holds complete for the first down. Back to Kerry Watkins, the freshman from Louisiana. You can see the game plan emerging for North Carolina State on defense. Third down, they're only going to rush three players. 
try to put a spy right here on Joe, and everybody back here is going to play a zone defense. What happens? You see that? You run the crossing routes. There's the middle of the field right there. You throw the ball. That's what the quarterbacks do. You give me zone, I throw to the middle of the field. Man-to-man, -man, I throw outside. Now, man-to-man. Watkins with two catches already, Gary, for 33 yards. And Hamilton on a beautiful fake. Got the corner and picked up almost nine more before Adrian Wilson brings him down for North Carolina State. He's slick with the ball, too, isn't he? He really is. You know, and that's the point guard in Joe coming out right there. He knows. He feels the sport. He figures out the game, and he understands what the defense is trying to take away from him. Friend, like I tried to say in the open, I don't know if you can stop this defense. Florida State found out you couldn't, that's for sure. 22 for 24 inside the 20. Now they have a first and 10 at the state 13, and you get the feeling that Jamie Barnett better get ready for a shootout if they can finish here. Gregor slashes now to the seven-yard line. An ABC Sports presentation of ACC College Football is brought to you by Chevrolet Trucks. The most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. Chili's, a proud sponsor of ABC College Football. Morgan Stanley, Dean Witter. We measure success one investor at a time. And National Car Rental. So what are you waiting for? Let's go. At the six-yard line. Second down for the rambling wreck. Here's Gregory. Picks his way. And it dives up to the two-yard line. So the sophomore from Homewood, Illinois, an impressive runner here in the early going in this game. Six carries for 43 yards for Gregory. And remember, this is a team that's already lost Joe Burns and Phillip Rogers, their two leading ball carriers. Sean Gregory has done a nice job for this football team. At 150 yards against Central Florida, and I think he probably has been the surprise for the football team all year, the way he stepped in. Wilder set up in front of Gregory. Gregory bounces, dives to the end zone, loose ball. And he was in for the touchdown, the linesman with his hands up. The umpire and the back judge waited for the linesman to make the call. They watched the loose ball in the end zone, but the linesman said he had possession as he broke the plane, therefore a touchdown, and Luke Mange on for the extra point. Make it 7 nothing. Brent, just as you called it, that was the proper order. The umpire looks to see who gets the ball, and he trusts the other official to make the call. Here it is. Now you will watch as Gregory bounces off the hit. Watch the ball across the plane, and then as he swings the arm up, no question about it, he broke the plane of the end zone for the touchdown, and Georgia Tech strikes first on a beautiful day in Atlanta. Time out. One more look now at the touchdown. The man who made the call had this exact view. Watch the knee in relation to the ball as he bounces off the hit toward the end zone. The ball was coming loose just as he crossed the line, but watch this, the knee is down. So if he didn't score, it should have been Tech's ball again. Either one of the two. Either he scored or it should have been second and goal. Now Georgia Tech to kick it off. Just caught the corner of the end zone, coming out on the 20. Let's remind you now about primetime football tomorrow. ESPN, Warren Sapp, and that great Buccaneer defense. They go in to take on Gary's Detroit Lions. Then Monday, Brett Favre and the Packers face their old coach, Mike Holmgren and the Seahawks. That's the Monday night football game. You know, Gary, I got to say uh, that your Lions are surprising a lot of people with well, the way they're playing. Georgia Tech's Bobby Ross is doing a good job there right Absolutely. now. The last national championship here, what, 1990, wasn't it? And uh, George O'Leary was his defensive coordinator, and Bobby slowly turning that team around. J.B. Barnett. The senior quarterback with the option, puts it in Spikes' hands, tries to get the corner, and uh, he gains three before Jeremy Myers, the free safety, gets him out of bounds. 
So on a beautiful Saturday afternoon in Atlanta, Georgia, a sellout crowd on hand for an ACC game featuring perhaps the young man who is now the leading candidate to win the Heisman Trophy, named after a one-time Georgia Tech coach, John Heisman. They have never won it here at Georgia Tech, and Joe Hamilton with a great chance. Second down and seven for North Carolina State, down a touchdown. Three wide outs. Jamie sees the bluff blitz coming, almost came off of it. Robinson for a yard, and this will leave them in about third and six coming up. Gathers and cries in making the stop. All right, let's take a look at Jamie Barnett. Great career at North Carolina Strakes. What if he does well? You know, I think what he does best is he's tough. He's played against all type of competition. His first game was against Alabama, and he stuck it in there against a great Alabama team in 96. He's tremendous in the pocket, knowing where guys come, sidestepping. He has one weakness. He does not have great speed when he runs with the ball. Rashawn Spikes and Ray Robinson are alternating at running back. And now Spikes comes in, and they put him on a wing as Barnett backs up. Takes the direct snap, and the whistle sounded, and a flag prior to the snap. Barnett's in. Come on, you got to concentrate, man. Dead ball. Delay of game by the offense. Jamie Barnett was a little upset with the play calling coming in that time because remember, probably 50% of the calls that quarterbacks are now making in college football has to be checked once the play is called, either with protection or a run to a pass or a pass to a run. And he's telling Mike, get the ball in, get the play in. Third down and 11. Robinson on the juggle, caught it after one bounce but doesn't gain much, and North Carolina State is forced to punt. Good defense by the freshman, Ricardo Wimbush. This is a very young defense here at Georgia Tech. Three true freshmen are playing. Wimbush is one of the true freshmen, first-year players. And you know what everybody was excited about in this play, Brent? An open field tackle. Catch the ball, one linebacker, one running back, make the tackle. Irwood was under a lot of pressure with his last punt rushes this one and Marvius Hester picks it up on the move at the 41 yard line crosses midfield good field position again a 14 yard return for Hester Tech leads it by seven timeout in Atlanta a lot of good action around the country this one of them in the ACC Georgia Tech leading North Carolina State Georgia and Florida deadlocked at seven in Jacksonville and of course in the Big Ten we got a big one brewing with Penn State going down to Illinois Sidney Ford now in at running back play fake Hamilton fires and got it right there Des makes a beautiful catch and now Joe Hamilton five of eight on the day and John Saunders what's going on with the Nittany Lions down in Champaign and Brent, here on the Burger King update, they're struggling a little bit early on. Illinois coming off the win against Michigan. Rocky Harvey, a great day in that game here. 34 yards for the touchdown. Right now, it's seven zip, Brent. Oh, big roar from the Virginia Tech fans down in this part of the country, John. He was up to date on that baby. And here comes Ford slashing now to the 27-yard line. You come down here, folks, out of Big Ten and Big 12 country, and you talk to them about Virginia Tech. And all the coaches will tell you, that team is for real. They've got one of the better defensive units in the country. The freshman quarterback, Vic, is a fine player. And, of course, their special teams at VTech are always outstanding. So that's the sleeper team to watch. Gregory back in. Gary? Pressure will start to go to Virginia Tech now a little bit, too, as the focus gets on them. Linebacker steps into the gap. Going to come at Gregory, and so Hamilton kept it. Another beautiful fake, and Joe Hamilton now with almost 70 total yards after that 15-yard run. So he's doing it all again. I tell you, the right tackle, it, North, uh, Georgia Tech got away with one just before the snap right there. The right tackle, Carmen, I think, flinched on that play, and everything's going right for Joe Hamilton and Tech right now. 
Three carries for Hamilton, 26 yards. Sean Gregory has already rushed for 45 yards. He's the running back right behind Hamilton. Option look, Hamilton, soft corner. Joe cuts it back, dives to the end zone, and he's down at the one-yard line. Joe Hamilton has one thing that I think all great athletes must possess. That is vision. There is a penalty flag, however, drawn on the play on the far side. He can see things on the move so well, coming back because of a holding call. But you think of the great ones, even the little quarterbacks like Doug Flutie. Man, when that field opens up and they see daylight, they're off. Not only does he see it, he knows what to do after he sees it. The guy can react to situations. And I think the guys, that, the great people that see things, like the Joe Montanas that see things happen, they anticipate things happening a little bit before they Holy do, and they're ready for it. By the offense, 10 yards from the spot of the foul, repeat the down. They're just a step ahead of you all the time. I think you're going to see it come in just on the left side of the screen. You're going to see an arm. He's got a 45 right at Burnett. He's got his arm in the back of the jersey. When you see the distorted number on the back of the jersey from the defense, you always know you're going to get a hold. We'll give Brent Key a pass on that, number 70. He's back after an injury at that right guard spot. Sidney Ford checks back in a running back. He's a freshman out of Lindale, Georgia, and they send Campbell home. And look at this. Touchdown, Kelly Campbell, the great speed. They bring him in motion for 17 yards in behind the formation, and he walks in for Georgia Tech's second touchdown of the game. Brent, in high school, Kelly Campbell ran the anchor late in the 4 by 100 yard high school 400 one hundred yard meter track meet. They won the state championship. Didn't this look like the last leg, him getting the baton right there? <laughs> it's really right in stride, wasn't it? I mean, he was moving before anybody moved. About as much contact as he <laughs> right. had. Three, two, <laughs> he I stayed in his lane and just ran for the end zone. Manche. <laughs> and just like that, Georgia Tech puts a pair of touchdowns on the board here against North Carolina State with 3.04 to go on the first. All right. Second leg, the center's got it. Third leg, Joe has it. The relay leg, the last leg, the anchor leg, Kelly's going to get it right here. Watch it. Can't even circle him fast enough. Everybody's standing here for North Carolina State going, who's got the ball? Oh, he's got, the, well, I'm never going to catch him. This is just a track meet going the wrong direction around the track. What a beautiful play. How do they have time to practice all these plays? Let me tell you one thing. Well, I didn't know Joe Hamilton was that good at ball handling. <laughs> he can really deal the football back there with these hands that he's got. Now, we take a look at the player facts, and let's back up what Gary was telling you. A 4-3-40, flat fly. Chris Edwards, one of the linebackers, can get it up in the air. And, of course, I told you they had good tackles. And you can see what Carmen can pitch here, 450 pounds, and Noah King, the center, right there with it. You know, it's, Brent, it's been the emergence of Kelly Campbell that has really turned this Georgia Tech team around. I mean, that has allowed Des White to get more balls. He only caught nine balls the first three games, but Campbell's emergence has given him the two receivers that Ralph Friedgen loves to have. North Carolina State needs somebody to do something. Maybe it'll be Ellerby here, 36 or 32. Patterson, one of their two return men. They cannot let this get out of hand early because this is some high-powered offense here in Atlanta. And they are now forced early on to do something that Coach O'Kane did not want to do, and that's play catch-up. So Patterson's got it. Slammed at the 22-yard line. And a reminder that tomorrow at ABC, don't miss the season premiere of the Grand Prix of figure skating. The road to gold begins as the world's top Olympic eligible skaters compete in the first of six. Michelle Kwan, Sarah Hughes, Michael Weiss, and Elvis Stoiko headline the field at the National Car Rental Skate America. Tomorrow at 1 Eastern, ABC. Did we have some more yellow down yeah, here? Yeah, I think the officials got a directive that these guys are offsides on kickoffs. You know, they used to be like the getting in the lane in basketball. They kind of used right. to let them go. Now it's... This is the emphasis this Encroachment week. Encroachment <laughs> by the kicking team. Five-yard penalty. Re-kick. Well, we all love watching kickoffs. <laughs> <laughs> let's check in with Jack Aru, Jack. Well, Brent, let's not make this a coming-out party just for Joe Hamilton. At the ACC kickoff luncheon this year, Joe Hamilton met Jamie Barnett. They became fast friends. Why? Because they're ultra-competitive. 
They played video games together. They compared notes. They talked about this game. But the one thing that Barnett kept rubbing into Hamilton, he kept saying, hey, Joe, I'm taller than you are. <laughs> but, hey, guess what? I'm shorter, but I'm ahead 14 points. Well, the video game, see, Joe Hamilton's got one of those 32-bit games, and right now, Jamie Bardet's team's got a 16-bit. They don't have the, the parts to keep up with this offense for Joe. Another penalty flag. This is like a mirror image of what happened before, I think. Two of them come flying. And this will give starting field position for North Carolina State inside their 20 and Brent for the year. You can see State coming into this game. 55 of 110. The Half return, of their starts. The spot of the foul, first down. 50% of their special, uh, uh, possessions right there, as you can see, have started at the 20-yard line or less. That's an amazing stat for a year and why North Carolina State has struggled to score points all year. And this one will start back on the 15-yard line. Barnett starting slowly. He is one of three for two yards. Running back is Spikes. Three wide receivers. Spikes behind the left side of the line. Perhaps four yards before Claybrooks can bring him down. Well, we talked about the Wolfpack struggling on offense this year. No doubt. I mean, they lose Chris Coleman and Ryan Hamrick. They've had to go with basically my three sons at wide receiver here. Brian Peterson, Corin Robinson, and Julian, Julian Patterson. Very, very young. The only experience they had at wide receiver. Both of those guys are out of this football game. Second down and six. Peterson goes in motion. They'll run spikes to that corner. And a great tackle by Jamara Clark, number one prevented from spikes from making a first down for the Wolfpack. Isn't that interesting, Jamara Clark getting a tackle, Brent? Because we know at Thursday the coaches have been riding this guy unmercifully about his tackling. They all know he's got great tackle, right? I mean, there's no doubt about that. But you're not going to play for Teddy Roof, the defensive coordinator right there, or George O'Leary if you don't tackle. So it is third down and one for the Wolfpack. Spike still in at running back. Roberts offset to the right. Middle. And if they give him a good spot, it's a first down. Number Ross seven, Mitchell three, filling in, stepping in as a starter, made the stop for Georgia Tech. Tackle made by number 45. Ross and it is Mitchell. going to be a first down for North Carolina State. First and 10 for the 25. There's Mitchell, number 45. I think it's Rogers comes in there, number 38. And then there's the tackle just past the line. Claybrooks comes in and cleans it up a little bit. There's Tillman. You know, Georgia Tech, if they tackle well, they feel good about themselves. And that's important when you're a defensive player. Carlos Doggett in at running back. They swing it back outside on a big play. They hit Julius Patterson. A speedster, and he crosses midfield. So for the first time today, North Carolina State can work with half a field because of that 26-yard gain. Nice-looking play. This is almost the Purdue offense right here. Ball comes out wide. It's the bubble screen, basically. Just, just a long handoff to the outside. But watch number three on the right side, Corn Robinson. There's the block that kind of springs this play from getting from five yards to a big play for NC State. The wide receivers, when they block downfield, you get big plays. Spikes back in. There's the Wolfpack running back. Corn Robinson, oh, they they've got the same play. 
inside the 45-yard line. A pickup of five yards on their end around. Chris Young making the stop. Isn't it amazing when something goes well in college football, everybody finds out about it. Remember Shafi Fields did this early against Arizona. Vinny Sutherland has done it at Purdue for a couple years. And all of a sudden, the same play, the quick motion, the sweep. And the reason they're doing that is so many teams do the one back. And now linebackers have to zero in on different people besides just one back back there. Eric Leak is off to Jamie Barnett's left converted running back. Now wide receiver. It almost intercepted and should have been. I believe Barnett was hit on the throw and Ricardo Wimbush, the freshman, should have had a pick on that play. So fresh life. And let's see if Barnett can take advantage of it. Jamie Barnett got hit just as he let this ball go inside. And I think that's why... Bryson gets him, and the ball just dies, and Wimbush goes, I know why I'm playing defense. <laughs> Can't get any better than that. Des White's going to have to work with him on that one. <laughs> Third down and five now for North Carolina State. No doubt Wimbush is going to be a defensive player the rest of his career. He's done it. Moves the pocket. Downfield incomplete. Fourth down. Down two touchdowns, fourth down here from the 44-yard line. Would you do anything except punt here, Gary? I, I think I punt only because if you don't, Joe Hamilton has 100% of the offense he can run from the 45-yard line. If you back him up, maybe something happens and you get a cheap touchdown. That's exactly what O'Kane will do. Scott Airwood, back to punt. And the final seconds set the tick off here in our opening quarter. Georgia Tech puts a pair of touchdowns on the board. That'll come out on the 20 when we start the second quarter, that 44-yard punt. But Joe Hamilton and Georgia Tech strike first. 14 points. The power run. The trickery. They've got the whole bag of tricks here at Georgia Tech. Time out. South Carolina is Joe Hamilton's field of dreams. At Tommy Lee Kinlaw's Barber Shop, you get a haircut and the latest on Joe, all for eight bucks. Fourteen points and 159 yards of offense for George O'Leary's Georgia Tech team. They're up. On North Carolina State, 14-0 as we start the second quarter for the 20-yard line. Joe Hamilton comes back to work again using Ford. No gain on that play. And during that timeout, Coach O'Leary came over and had a word with our Jack Aroot. Tackle made by number 44, Lamar Fisher. Coach, your defense had pluses and minuses, but they've stood the test so far. Well, I tell you, the turnovers, we got to limit the penalties, but we're playing aggressive with a good emotion and hustle, and that's what I was looking for this game. And... They're going to get some plays, but we just got to make more plays than they get. Thank you. Second down now and 10. One running back is Ford. Play fake. Hamilton so quick in taking the ball down. Snaps it off, and a pass is dropped by Kelly Campbell, who scored a touchdown on that end of round, and he drops. I know you're interested in some scores. How about Texas today? Hanging on. 44-41 against Iowa State. Brent, everybody wants to know what makes Joe good. Watch his feet. Jamison comes around, he has to move his feet, and he throws in one motion. Those feet get him ready to deliver the ball. Dodge a guy and throw almost effortless. Gary, he's five of nine here. Two drops. Third down and ten for him. Pressure, look how he stepped away from the heat. Out to the 30, close to a first down, absolutely amazing. Clint Johnson in all over him, and Sheldon Key forced to make the stop, but not before Joe scrambled for 11 yards. He's a magician. You know, I think Florida State had it right on how you stop Joe Hamilton. You put him out of the game. That's the only way you have a chance, because he sees everything happening right in front of him. He reacts so well. Like you said, the great athletes see it, but the best ones react to it so quick, and that's what he's doing. Now first down and 10. Sidney Ford still in at running back. Here's the option. There's the pitch. Here's Ford looking for the corner. 
and couldn't get it because of LeVar Fisher. Been slowed by an injured ankle the last couple of weeks, and he makes a great tackle there. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Jeep, makers of Grand Cherokee, Cherokee, and Wrangler. Aflac, without it, no insurance is complete. Inspired technology with a human touch, Nokia, connecting people, and Applebee's. You belong at Applebee's. Ed Wilder's in the game right there. Fullback, tight end. He'll line up in a lot of different things. He's not 100% yet, but he gives them the blocking they need. Play fake, great block. And complete for 12 yards, but young Sidney Ford stepped on and protected his quarterback beautifully that time. And that's what you look for from a young running back is will he block for his quarterback? And right. Sidney did. Right behind the goal post, but he's going to come out here on the play fake and get the block. Sidney Ford is a guy that Georgia Tech wanted to redshirt this year. The injuries to Joe Burns and Phillip Rogers, Georgia Larry says, hey, we're number eight in the country. We got to play. I mean, we're, we, that's just the way it goes. And Sidney Ford, one of the most prolific running backs, uh, is in the ball game. And now they shift to the wishbone. And as a result, Des White came away with his third reception. And I'm going to tell you, out of this wishbone, they could do some fancy stuff. And uh, Joe Hamilton, a little bit concerned about the defensive look that time. So he'll use a Georgia Tech timeout, and we'll take a break. There's some proud parents, grandparents. Papa Joe Sr. right there on the right. There's the grandfather. There's mom over there to the left. All out of Alvin, South Carolina. Watch it, a fine young man. Their son and grandson. 116 total yards. And Joe Sr. with some words of encouragement. We've got a little microphone on him. He was nice enough to put it on for us. And, uh, here he hands off now to Ford. Ford bolts to the middle. Good-looking young running back. 11 yards, first down. Georgia Tech on that burst. And you know... One of the things, uh, Gary, as we, as we watch this game unfold with Joe Hamilton, the offensive lineman you think of as quickness, they've got to know at all times. And we're going to take a look at Gary's playbook on blocking for Joe Hamilton. An offensive lineman always wants to know where his quarterback is because from here he can do a good job. But sometimes too much of a mobile quarterback leaves too soon. You've got your guy, and all of a sudden he gets an easy sack. And the thing that Joe doesn't do, when he leaves, he realizes that he goes up the middle and get, avoids those cheap sacks when your offensive line is doing a good job. It's very frustrating for an offensive line when they are doing a good job and give up a sack. Well, there's the difference between a, uh, yep. a freshman runner and a senior quarterback. Folks, yeah, if that right. had been Joe Hamilton, he'd have got the first down spot. Now, now Sydney, <laughs> only a freshman, they're going to say it's inches to go, okay? So we're going to have, yeah. I'm going to tell you, the young man, he just blew it out of there, though, on that run. Nice time, though, to do something big in this situation. I'd say Joe Hamilton now with almost a free shot. He'll just take it right up the middle. So Joe, Joe Hamilton Hamilton's now Hamilton. believed to be the leading candidate for the Heisman. Let's check in on what's going on. Drew Brees today in a victory completed 64 percent you can see down there for the season and that's what he did against minnesota ron dane 162 i think he needed to average 166 if i can remember what i read the atlanta constitution right, right on huh? to uh to break the record so he's well, still right there you know what's key for all of them brett who wins the most games i mean if joe hamilton runs it out i think he's going to win it well as ron dane runs it out and beats the record then i think ron dane might steal it it's possible. All those fellows who have broken that rushing record in the past, you go back to the door set, they all won the Heisman. And now, Hamilton comes around the left side. And first down, and uh, let's meet the Hamilton family. Let's go down to Jack. Well, Brent, I'm in the Heisman. I mean, Hamilton family <laughs> section here. Joe Sr., I want to ask you a quick question. Where did Joe Jr. get his toughness? <laughs> I guess he, he could say a little bit from me. You think so? Uh, I think a little bit, but now, you know, it's a total package of everybody in the community who always push them and push them to be hard and, you know, work hard at his game. We'll get back to you in a second. You know, he wanted to say me right away, Jack. Yeah. You know, he, he would, really uh, did. He really wanted to say, why, why are you asking me that? He it's could, so obvious. He could feel Grandfather Silas looking over his yeah, shoulder. Yeah, we can't move it. <laughs> Jack, ask that same question to Mom for me, will you? <laughs> Take it away, Jack. Actually, Brent, I'm going to ask Grandpa Silas okay. that question. <laughs> now, Joe Sr. says that Joe Jr. got his toughness from him. Is that right, Grandpa? Well, he he get it from me. 
<laughs> but uh, uh but this is the chip off the old block. <laughs> That's great. A solid chip too. You can hardly cut that to chip that out. Now, Mom, uh, how does it feel to watch your son play football, not only here in college, but when they played without pads at the Sweet Potato Patch? It feels fantastic. I'm really proud of Joe. He's doing an excellent job. Guys? Uh, reason to be proud, indeed. Chip off the old block and a solid chip at that. Uh, Nelly Campbell comes in motion toward the line. Joe is back, going down deep for Campbell at the five-yard line and great coverage by Lloyd Harrison but that was a beautiful pass Joe threw absolutely and Lloyd Harrison the senior did not panic on that play he's been through the wars he's covered everybody Peter Warwick I mean he had Torrey Hilt before but this time when the ball's in the air Lloyd Harrison doesn't panic there he is number two watch him find the ball stick the left hand out there and make the play that's why Lloyd Harrison was a preseason all-american football player at corner great defense Hamilton starts six of eleven he does have the one interception 73 yards no touchdowns on the day both of the Georgia Tech touchdowns rushing touchdown three-step drop and dropped again and uh, oh, his great. receivers have got the dropsies and Harrison is right there with the pop you know Brent I, I called it a drop before by Des White but he got popped right when that ball arrived you got to give the credit to the defense on that one perfect throw slant pass miss how they teach you playoff look at he's inside looking at the quarterback sees the quick drop there's the ball boom oh wait a minute there's you are a quarterback and you're gonna say that he shouldn't have caught that pass. you would jump all over <laughs> oh, why no. he should have caught that ball and you know it <laughs> no I, I think I, I really I think that he got it in <laughs> don't you give me that <laughs> I mean in college it. football that's as good as it gets <laughs> Third down at 15 now. Hamilton's got great time. And he underthrew his man who broke open late <laughs> on the play. That was Des White. You're, you're not used to working with a quarterback that gives defense a credit. <laughs> no, right? I certainly am not. <laughs> Fouts used to blame all the receivers. I know, I know. Guy, you know? Okay, well, here we are. <laughs> sellout crowd in Atlanta, Georgia. Second quarter, the Ramblin' Wreck with only one loss, leading by a couple of touchdowns. With Dan Dyke in the punt. Hey, we're having a lot of fun, but that was a tremendous stop for the NC State yes, pack. They had to do it. 14-0, they had to have a stop. And now they need something good, don't they, to have it on, uh, on offense. we got an illegal formation, Georgia Tech. They're going to get whistled here. Watch how good this is, but a penalty is going to bring it back. Tech, too many men in the backfield. The late arriving wingbacker, gunner, whatever you call him, to the outside of the formation did not get at the line of scrimmage. It's going to be a legal formation, and they're going to have to repunt. 17 penalties last week, Georgia Leary, or a couple weeks ago against Duke. Georgia Leary said that's one of the things we have to do better if we're going to run the table here. So that's the fifth penalty. And uh, George not happy. Outstanding college football coach. Well, we got a moment. Let's uh, check in on our Aflac trivia quiz. And some of you Georgia Tech folks are going to know this one. What former Ivy League football player right there was the first full-time head football coach here at Georgia Tech? Came out of the Ivy League. He was a running back out at Penn. We'll have the answer a little bit later in the broadcast. See, this time, Brent, they're doing it right. Last time, he was off the line of scrimmage, and they had one, two, three, four, five bats. You're only allowed four. yard line well the coaches stressed tackling all week on the part of georgia tech and they have been much crisper time out tech leads at 14 nothing but here in atlanta georgia tech leading 14 nothing and of course some of you already know that Furman upset north carolina today and the tar heels are now one and seven on the season that lone win was at indiana they beat the hoosiers 42 30. since then they've lost to florida state clemson georgia tech houston maryland and now Furman. So they lost ronald curry their fine all-around athlete up there and nothing has gone right for the tar heels this year first down at 10 for jamie barnett and north carolina state looking for something positive to happen and nothing right there they just stuffed the fullback Derek Roberts, no chance. Brent, the misery continues for the Wolfpack. 
starting again inside their 20. Four possessions, three of them have started at the 20 or less. I know from playing football, your chances of going 80 yards against any defense is less than 50%. I mean, when you get the ball at midfield, you get turnovers, you got a chance to get into that four down territory. Your chance of driving 80 yards against Tech, even if they're not playing great defense, is slim. Corin Robinson goes off to the right side of the formation as the slot receiver on this second and ten. Barnett will be looking for somebody to get open. And they elect instead to put it in Ray Robinson's hands. And uh, that's not going to do much for him. It's now going to leave him in third and long. Gary, I thought, sure, second and ten. Down two touchdowns. They'd come up firing that Well, it, it was the old thing where you're trying to get to the first down situation. Looking at the two quarterbacks right there. Look at the hits. Look at the hits. Joe Hamilton, that's why he's so amazing. Gives you the yardage and takes the hits to make those yards go. That's why Florida State put him out twice in his career against them. Maybe it was three times in his career, but he has stayed healthy this year and is producing, and that's why he is such a front runner for the Heisman. You know, we talked to him about perhaps playing some football in either the World Football League or the Canadian Football <laughs> League, and he's open to yeah, that. Yeah, he is. He wants to prove himself. Absolutely, he? and that is one way when you look around the National Football League, see the success of fellows like Kurt Warner, John Kitna, and uh, Damon Heward, you know that if you go someplace and get some snaps, Gary, it can't do anything but help. I think every time Doug Flutie completes a pass, more people look at Joe Hamilton. Absolutely. On the move, Second he can quarter create. Quarter. Let's check in with Jack Aru. Jack? Alabama well, Brent, you know North Carolina Southern State's had seven. problems. Thinness in the depth in their offensive line. So Mike O'Kane makes all of their linemen, whether they need it or not, wear these braces. The cost to the program, $10,000. Well, I'll tell you, if it saves a couple of youngsters, though, it is well worth it. You can't put the price on a knee. Time out. Second quarter score. Linebacker Chris Edwards was shaken up. Appeared to be a shoulder injury. He walked off to the Georgia Tech sideline. We come back now with third down and eight to go. And a third down conversions. North Carolina State is only one of four. Barnett is two of six passing for 28 yards, but 26 of them came on one play. He's back to throw it again. Under pressure, gets it off. First down. A beautiful throw to Corin Robinson. The redshirt freshman can't believe he got that one off. See, that's what I, I talk about Jamie Barnett, his greatness in the pocket. He stays there. He was a run-and-shoot quarterback in high school. In fact, Michael Kane said, if we'd have had him in camp, We'd have never recruited him, but he's tough. He stays in there, and Corey Robinson comes back and catches this ball, and that's a huge first down. Big stop for the Wolfpack defense, and now they come back and get the first down. Let's see if the Wolfpack can build on that. First down and 10. 10.29 to go here in the first half. They're down a couple of touchdowns to Georgia Tech. Barnett's option, and here comes on the pitch the spikes. Cut down. So the Georgia Tech defense stretches it out and strong safety for Young making the stop. And so now let's go back on our AFLAC trivia question. This former Ivy League football player was the first full-time head football coach at Georgia Tech. And of course, everyone knows his name. John Heisman, for whom the trophy is named. Head coach here from 1904 to 1919. One of the legendary names of Georgia Tech football. I know everybody around here would like to complete the circle and give that Heisman to Joe Hamilton, wouldn't they? Oh, wouldn't they? Oh, Gary got a great chance to this year. Second down and eight. Barnett. A good time. Robinson's got it. Touchdown, North Carolina State. They won't touch him. 70 yards. There's the big play that State was waiting to happen. Coach O'Kane, and they break him loose down the sideline. Little things can mean so much. Remember the illegal formation on the punt, the third down pass, and now the opportunity to get a touchdown against the safety coming over late. Amazing how this football game can change quickly when you make a couple mistakes. And passing him. That's the extra point. And now North Carolina State down by only one touchdown. 14-7. 
the Corn. big play, the 70-yarder. Sorry, Brent. Corin Robinson, the wide receiver right here. They talk about him in terms of Torrey Holt, a future star. He's got great size, great speed. But watch this throw. Can't do it any better than that. Chris Young, the safety, number 33, took a bad angle. The safety's got to make sure they either get the ball or they make the tackle. But you know what? Jamie Barnett, the questions early in the year was, how come he can't throw deep? Well, here's the reason now. Look at that offensive line. Room to step up and throw the ball in the pocket, and all of a sudden the quarterback has that deep arm again. When you have a chance to throw the ball, step into it, you can make these type of throws. And it was a beautiful throw, wasn't it? The, sa the safety was late getting there, and he's got to make the tackle. Don't have to intercept it, but you must make the tackle. But Robinson, great, great player and he's going to be a future tremendous player and Barnett jumps up and ties Danny Cannell now for the all-time touchdown pass leadership in the ACC Joe Hamilton seven behind Jamie Barnett so that duel continues for the rest of the season pretty good names on that list you bet and Brent you know what a wonderful story about Jamie Barnett I mean Michael Kane said we recruited him as an athlete you know I really didn't see him that much Gary he told me but we thought we could always move him to wide receiver. We timed him. He was 4'8". He was stuck at quarterback. That's a nice guy to have stuck at quarterback for your team. You bet. Bobby Moore kicks it off, and then the state defense, led by their tough corner, Lloyd Harrison. We'll see what they can do against Joe Hamilton with 9.20 to go. Fielded at the 4 by Dez White. The wide receiver cuts back left side. Got an alley. Gets it outside, 35, and down to 42, Eric Leak. The wide receiver saves a possible touchdown, but a 38-yard return. We've talked about Lloyd Harrison earlier in the game. If you weren't with us, he turned Joe Hamilton over. A great interception going into the end zone. And then he has forced one wide receiver after another to give it up before he delivers the lick. To the 5'11", 190-pound senior leading the way. And we'll see what he can do now because here comes Joe Hamilton. And he'll have behind him number 32, Sean Gregory, back in at running back. There's White, the motion receiver. The option look, Joe got the corner. Almost a first down as he just rolls across midfield. He's now rushed eight times for 65 yards. Joe Hamilton has been taking a beating to get these yards, but he's a guy that just makes his team win no matter what he does. And this is the guy that chose Georgia Tech over Nebraska. Pretty good choice, I think. Uh, I think so. Oh, too Courtney bad he Brown. couldn't get a Courtney, his teammate, to come here with him. They recruited <laughs> Courtney Brown, and of course he went to Penn State and uh, one of the finest defensive linemen in the country. There are a lot of folks who talk about him going in the top five when the NFL selects players. We're talking now about Courtney Brown. They played together on a couple of high school championship basketball teams. And Joe was the point guard, and Courtney Brown was the forward. And uh, Joe Pretty said, good. I used to feed him. I used to give him the ball. <laughs> Hey, Brent, remember last time in this situation, short and very, I mean, second down and very short yardage, they ran the quarterback sneak. Watch if they don't come up in the same formation and try to go deep this time and steal a touchdown. Well, we've got some injuries to check in on. Let's go down to Jack Aru, Jack. Well, Brent, let's update you on Derek Roberts. He's had a chronic shoulder problem for the Georgia Tech linebacker. They are going to keep him out until halftime and evaluate him then. Big blow for North Carolina State, though. Running back Chris Edwards is out of the game temporarily with a problem with a bruised hip. Here's the handoff now, and Gregory breaks it. Big hole on the left side to the 36-yard line. Harrison makes the stop after a 13-yard game. You know, Lloyd Harrison is keeping North Carolina State in the football game right now. He's, he's intercepted a pass. He's batted away a couple. Made an open field tackle right there on a second and inches. Right now, the NC State defense has no idea what play's coming. No, I, I, I don't. They haven't circled anything yet. They can't know it. The Frigian playbook. Yep. Gregory back to the right side. That time, the Wolfpack ready. And that's the loss of about a yard as they stuff that play. Coming around the right side. Adrian Wilson.
No gain. Brent Des White, Second and ten playmaker for, for this football team. Let's look at what he does well and not well. He's a physical guy, great speed, great size. And the read is he's a great long ball catcher. So far, he hasn't had the chance. But the scouting report was right. He struggles with the straight on passes. He's dropped one and a half. He's in motion, <laughs> handoff now to Gregory. And Gregory is stuffed, third down. Now, Jack, uh, Jack, you confused me just a little bit. Uh, you want to go back? Maybe I didn't hear you right on the injury. No, you heard me right. I'm just dyslexic. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about Derek Roberts from Putnam, Connecticut, the running back for North Carolina State. He's the guy that has the bruised hip. Meanwhile, it is number five, the linebacker for Georgia Tech, Chris Edwards, that's had the chronic shoulder problem. He's the one that's going to be evaluated at halftime and may, I say may, be back in the second half. All right, Jack, thank you very much. Jack, of course, last week had a tougher road trip than the rest of us. He started off in Alvin, South Carolina. Spent some delightful time up there. Hamilton's back now. Can't find a man, and he's going to slip free. But not very far. Reaches the 31-yard line. Picked up Joe maybe three yards with Burnett bringing him down in a hurry. That Antonio Burnett is going to be a fine college linebacker. And, and here's his game plan. Spy number 14. 45, you got 14. Play some basketball. Stay right there. Keep your eyes out. Don't look for anybody else. Stay right there. Take away the running lanes. That's exactly what he does. And the pursuit from everyone else makes his tackle easier. Here comes a 49-yard field goal attempt by Luke Manje. His long is 37. So if he kicks it and makes it, it would be his longest. Got it. A 49-yarder. Luke Manje makes it 17-7. You get a pat on the helmet. Nobody stays closer to the special teams as a head coach than George O'Leary here at Georgia Tech. You start kicking those 49-yarders, and all of a sudden that field really shrinks as you're a play caller for Ralph Fregi. Remember yesterday, George O'Leary told us, when we get inside the 35, I tell Ralph, it's four down territory. Now he might have to rethink that. He's got a field goal kicker. The color in the pageant for college football. And more bands in action coming your way next Saturday on ABC. In this area, you can watch him again. Joe Hamilton and Georgia Tech will take on Virginia. And then we have other regional activities. So if you've got a dish, you can click around and watch all those games. Next Saturday, 3.30 Eastern Time. Amazing how this game works. Georgia Tech's at home. They're leading 17 to 7, but NC State feels good about themselves. They just scored on a long series. They stopped the drive to a field goal, and now they say it's our turn to put points on the board and put a little bit of pressure back on the Georgia Tech offense. Interesting game evolving here. Philip Newman will kick it off. So even if you can handle a 49-yard field goal, they use somebody else to kick it off. So a couple of fine young legs here at, uh, at Georgia Tech. Oh. LRB bobbled it out of bounds inside the five-yard line. Big mistake by the young man returning that kickoff, and that is going to put Jamie Barnett and the offense for Coach O'Kane in a deep, deep hole. Can't tell you how many different plays you lose when you have your ball on the four or five yard line instead of the 25 or 30 yard line. Ellerby burps this one right out of bounds. Oh, that is tough on the offense. Now we'll see what kind of an approach the state elects to use here. They're down 17-7. 607 to go in the first half. Rashawn Spikes is the running back, and Barnett changes up with a lot of noise down there. Play fake, and they're going to throw for the end zone. Incomplete, and he was under enormous pressure that time. Greg Gathers, the freshman out of Louisiana, was coming. Jamie Barnett is upset because he checked to a pass play and neither receiver, watch this, they both come out the block, they did not hear the checkoff. Half the team is running one play, the receivers are coming out the block, the running play. 
You got young players out there, and Jamie Barnett has to understand that they're still freshmen and first-year players. And a lot of noise down you there, bet. too. People that don't realize how tough it is to play on the road. Second down and 10. Come back, and it is Spikes to the 12-yard line as he bolts up the middle. The senior from... Meriden, Connecticut. He was tackled by number 26. Leading rusher out of Meriden, excuse me, 531 yards. Averaging better than four yards a carry. Third down and two. Third down and two. Check there are the wristband for the plays that are being used by Barnett. This would be a big play for North Carolina State if they can keep this drive alive. Drops it off over the middle to Robinson for the first down. Big play. That's all they needed out to the 19 and a fresh set of downs. Good play calling that time by Michael Kane. Matched up against Ross Mitchell, the second team, maybe even the third team middle linebacker in the game. Georgia Tech's play and run. You match up your running back against a middle linebacker who Georgia O'Leary and Ted Roof really don't want in there in a passing situation. So there's the state offense, and you can see that three plays have given them a bunch of yards. They won the 70-yard pass play for the yep. touchdown, the longest play of the game, and a first down. Good job by the offensive line. Down the middle, got Robinson again. No, just overthrew him, and they almost break another one. But I must say that the offensive line at North Carolina State is giving Barnett a chance to go deep. You know, this Corinne Robinson right here, number three, is really some type of an athlete. The North Carolina State people have said that he is the best athlete that's ever gone to their football camp. There's a protection. Step up and throw. Anybody can throw it 45, 50 yards. And Robinson almost tracks this down for another big play. You know, he measures up pretty close to Terrence uh, to Holt, the guy who's playing for the St. Louis Cardinals right now, and that's pretty good measurements. Uh, Tory Holt. Drafted number six by Dick Vermeil with the unbeaten St. Louis Rams. And now you mentioned Holden. I want to tell you, Gary, he's made a big difference in there because what he does is balance the field out yep. for Isaac Bruce. He you really, can't he, roll the doubles up on him. But listen to these comparisons as we, as we wait for the pen, obvious penalty call right here. See if I can beat him or wait. Either one of the two here. Dead ball, false start by the offense, five-yard penalty. Torrey Holt was 6-1. Robinson is 6-2. Torrey Holt ran a 4-3, 6-40. Robinson a 439 and they both vertical jump 37 inches. That's why they say this guy is the type of player that can put pressure on the defense just like Holt. And of course Torrey's younger brother Terrence Holt, a member of the North Carolina State team, and he has been a specialist in blocking punts. Second down and 15. And that didn't fool anybody. Tried to get back some yards with Derek Roberts, and Georgia Tech says, nothing doing. You've used that play before, and they jump it. Now it'll be third and long. We talked about the big plays that NC State has had on offense. Couple that with the big plays Lloyd Harrison has had on defense, plus that penalty that Georgia Tech had on the punt. And you're looking at a team that is surviving, and they got four and a half minutes to survive in the first half. I know Michael King would love to get in the locker room at least 17 to 7. Huge play right here. Well, they've converted three of their last four third downs. This one's going to be tough. Third down and 14. They need to reach the 30-yard line. They'll try the middle. Robinson going for it. Going to be close now. It'll depend on the spot. I think he's just short. I think he's just short of the line. Gary going for the Paul McGuire <laughs> Award. <laughs> Take the other side. We're going to switch sides on this. Oh, no, I... You know, Jamie Barnett had guys right in his face that time. You know, that, the offensive line has done a great job all along. But this one he threw right with a guy right in his face. As I said, just me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, you doubled down on McGuire <laughs> on that one. You can have both ends oh, of it, Oh, boy, here we go. Right in his face. Watch this. Throws the ball backing up at the same time. Nice catch. Dives forward and first down. That, you know, with four, three minutes, four minutes to go, huge that's play. just, you know, the two Gary big huge. third down plays. They had to have. Absolutely. 
Just keep the ball out of Joe's hands, as you've been pointing out. That is so critical to North Carolina State. Stay in this game. 345. Now, Jamie Barnett. Play fake. It's open on the left. Seven yards on first down. See the difference between Joe when he runs and Jamie. Just different type of athletes. Well, tonight, Samuel L. Jackson and the Academy Award winner Kevin Spacey and John Grisham's A Time to Kill, ABC, tonight at 8, 7 Central. I know Kevin Spacey's in there, but Ashley Judd's in there. You couldn't wait to promo. <laughs> Start my VCR at home, please. I don't know <laughs> nothing. It's National Hockey League. Come night. on, they Canada. have VCRs in my team. I don't know what he's three. talking about. <laughs> Here we go. They show blitz from the corner. Here they come. Robinson, and they ambush the running play that time. Nick Rogers. Making a big play here for Georgia Tech. Tackle made by number 94, Beerwin Eccles. So Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, warm, comfortable Saturday Third afternoon. Down. Sellout and crowd seven. on hand at Bobby Dodge Denver. Stadium. Jack Aroot and Gary Danielson. I'm Brett Musburger. And outside, there's the statue of John Heisman. Something's been added. <laughs> number 14. Very, the very faint, but it's starting to focus in with every win. Second down now. I'll check that third down. Oh. Incomplete, and now they're forced to punt, and Joe Hamilton will have plenty of time. Plenty of time and two timeouts Fourth remaining. Down. This will put a lot of pressure on the NC State defense. And, you know, the, the screen pass was open. He had him. He just threw it a little bit too far. Michael Kane made the right call. Execution wasn't there. And the punt for NC State, number 25. Marvius Hester set to return. Burwood. And it'll be out of bounds at the 41-yard line. So about 60 yards here for Hamilton to work with against O'Kane's Wolfpack. Only a 26-yard punt. And because of the pressure, they're forcing Irwood to rush his punts. And uh, that resulted in only a 26-yarder yeah. that time, and that helps Hamilton in the field position. And Irwin, Irwin has talked about becoming a one-step less punter, and he's done that. He says he hits them more consistently, but today he has not. Three wide receivers, and they flex a tight end off to the left side of the formation. Oh! Incomplete and almost intercepted by Clayton White, who was running with it. Joe Hamilton's pass intended for number 80. Russell Joe Hamilton. Hamilton by himself is sixth in yards per game. Look That's not that. bad. That's not bad. He's a bunch of he's above all these teams by himself. Now, admittedly, he Second has the ball the all the time, so he should 21. be up there. But the amount of hits he takes just to stay healthy, you got to admire his play. Magician, absolute magician with the ball. The Barnett's out past him this half, 128 to 73 because of that 70 yard. Joey will try to pick up a few here. Under through his man, and it is incomplete. And third down coming up now. Very impressed with the North Carolina State secondary. They've got some good athletes there. We remember a year ago when they forced Chris Winkie into those interceptions. Tony Scott and Lloyd Harrison are two outstanding quarterbacks. And I tell you, Brian Williams, number 29, and Adrian Wilson, the two safeties, are very gifted also. Four very, very competent secondary players. And Joe Hamilton has missed six of his last seven because of that secondary, including here five in a row that he'll be working on trying to snap that. On third down and ten, breaks the streak, Des White, first down. 16 yards to Des White. Remember at halftime, we're going to be shipping you to New York. John Saunders and Terry Bowden on the Valvoline Halftime 99 report. That's still coming up. We've got 144 to go here. Joe calls it his fastball offense. That's what they're in right now. Fastball, fastball. Get up there and snap. And that is a fastball that he delivered to Watkins. Joe Hamilton's pass complete to number nine, Terry Watkins. Just got the feeling, don't you? 21, and he's just going to march this thing right down there into the end zone. Plenty of time, two timeouts, no problem. Second down and two. That also.
also complete to Campbell for another first down. Clock stopping gives him 114. So you can see how critical it was for North Carolina State to pick up still another first down and keep the ball out of Hamilton's hands. Joe is calling all of these plays. They're all on him. None of them are coming from the bench. Got him again and out of bounds. Stops the clock. The speedster Kelly Campbell, the sophomore from Atlanta Mays High School. There's Friedgen, the architect of this high-powered offense here. And it helps to have a quarterback as talented as Joe Hamilton, who has been here for four years. Well, and they, and they lived through the mistakes of Joe Hamilton early in his career, and they've molded. I mean, it's not like they made a rock into a diamond, but they sure polished him into a diamond, and Rell's got to take credit for that. Second down and one. With over a minute left here in the half. Back to the left side and the tight end for the first time, and it's a first down at the 14, Russell Matvey. Sophomore out of New York State. Still a minute. No reason to take a timeout yet. Get at the line of scrimmage. The advantage is to the offense. The defense has trouble changing defensive plays. Watch. Even NC State's going to take a timeout. They want to catch their breath. Absolutely. 56 seconds left in the half. And we'll take a break. 17-7 Georgia Tech leads it. Great moments in college sports. Make great memories and often inspire great achievement beyond the game. Come see it all at the Hall, the new NCAA Hall of Champions, a place to relive the action, savor the memories, discover what it means to be a true champion, and that might be the greatest moment sports has ever produced. The NCAA Hall of Champions, opening in downtown Indianapolis in March 2000. Growing up in Alvin, South Carolina, offered a lot of opportunities, believe it or not, for players like Joe Hamilton. In fact, what was most important is the elders mentoring the youngsters. After the game on Friday night, when they come around, they know all their mistake because they let them know their mistake and they know what to correct the next time. If they don't come on Friday night, when they get their hair cut on Saturday, somebody's going to let them know all the mistake that they make so that they can correct it. <laughs> you want a nice haircut? I gotta tell you what you did wrong first, right? <laughs> Jack looks pretty good too. I think he grabbed one while he was in Alabama. Why not? Sure. He probably, he probably got the network discount. <laughs> Joe Hamilton has hit five out of seven in this drive. He missed his first two. He's hit five in a row. And a first down inside the 15 yard line. Here's the matchup right down here. Des White, Lloyd Harrison. There's it right in his face. There's a quarterback draw. Hamilton slips the first tackle, not the second. Loses a yard on the play. They'll take a timeout now. Joe Hamilton on the carry. Brian Williams making the stop. Let's check in with John Saunders. You knew. Well, we go to John in about 49 seconds here as soon as we come to the end of the first half. Second down and 11 for what, you know, in all the world strikes you as a fast break offense. Remember, we talked about Joe Hamilton being a point guard in basketball. And uh, I remember Charlie Ward when they backed him up in the shotgun down at Florida State. And they went to an up-tempo fast break attack with the Seminoles. And it reminds you a little bit Absolutely. of how that unfolded. Absolutely. I think Charlie Ward changed college football. The ability to a guy to stand back there and shotgun and both run and throw has changed the game. And the speed has changed for Joe Hamilton, too, as he pops one over the middle, gets it in Campbell's hands. Campbell trying to get the corner. And it's close to a first down with Lloyd Harrison making still another play. What a great job by the corner, Lloyd Harrison, here in the first he, half. He really is. Remember we talked about Joe Hamilton, if there was going to be a blitz, they had to make him play, pay for it. All game, NC State has been playing off, not blitzing. This time they came, boom, there goes that slant pass. If it wasn't for Lloyd Harrison making an open field tackle, he would have gone in. Here's the blitz. You can see these guys come. It's all man-to-man -man coverage. Boom, quick pass. You read it quick. Even though 45 comes right at the cut, nobody touches him. Burnett, Joe Hamilton gets it off. And Brent, this guy's a good football player right here. 
Well, I'll tell you something else. The umpire did a great job of picking Tony Scott off on that it's play. part of the design. Part of the design of those plays run right at the umpire. He came right through him, and Scott just hit him. And, you, you know, we've talked about the... Uh, the speed of the game and how you progress when you become a senior. We asked Joe, how has the speed changed since your freshman year here? We went from 150 miles per hour to about 50, you know, uh, over the years. Not in a, uh, you know, instant, but, you know, a gradual change and being able to understand how to, you know, study film, being able to understand how to read defense and what defenses want to try to do has been a real asset. Yeah, because you understand things so much better and things don't surprise you, you see the whole field as you mature uh, in college as a quarterback. And, of course, things are much slower for him now. We'll see what he comes up with here. A first down, three yards to go, 39 seconds. No timeouts left. No timeouts left here with 39 seconds to go. Coaching staff does not want to get out of here empty-handed. This is a big play right now. Deflected. Incomplete as Nate Goodson deflected the pass. That was one of those zone blitzes. Tried to put a little bit of pressure up the Joe gut Hamilton and then pass. drop your defensive Bad tackle. Yeah, Goodson, he Nate was Goodson. a linebacker when he came to North Carolina Second State. They grew him up a little bit and made him one of those kind of hybrid guys that can drop back. The zone blitz. Still with 36 seconds to go, I think you could either run or pass the ball and still get off another play. Roll hard right, throw a touchdown, Georgia Tech. They brought Kerry Watkins around the corner, and they hit Watkins for the touchdown. A three-yard touchdown pass, Joe Hamilton's first touchdown pass of the game. Friend, we watch Georgia Tech run this play. It's one of their two-point plays. Here's the key. Watch right here. This guy is going to pick and force the man to come behind the pick as Jackson goes around. Now watch. Force him wide. Number 21 right here can't get to the play and make it, and that's why Hoff could never get to it. And the kick is good. And the extra point by Manje with 32 seconds to go. Coming from behind, you see it. Campbell goes upfield and shields it, and then Watkins gets the perfect throw. And I, I don't did he get in there enough? Anything close? They're calling a touchdown today. <laughs> close to the plane. Count. Yeah, exactly. Twenty-four-seven, and how critical it was for North Carolina State yep. to have run the clock out at the end of the half and not give Joe Hamilton and Georgia Tech a sixty-yard field to work with. If you listen to great coaches, whether they're, you know, in, in the west, the east, up north, or down south, they always stress the same thing. There's no such thing as little things in football. Everything counts. And I know Dick Vermeil, your old partner, used to say that. Anything can come up and grab you. But uh, illegal formation, not running out the clock, not downing a punt, everything's alive and changes the dynamics of the game Tech, as it goes on. 15, Newman. And for Georgia Tech here, Gary, 290 yards receive, of offense State, in the first half. They are on pace for a possible 600-yard game the way they, things are going. You can't stop them. You just got to try to outscore them. Philip Newman with the ball on the tee. 32 seconds left in the first half. Ellerby. Water at the 15-yard line. Number 36, Marcus Ellerby on the return. So a discouraging first half overall for North Carolina State. The seven represents one big play, a 70-yard pass play to Corn Robinson from Jamie Barnett. You know, you, you understand the defensive game plan by the Wolfpack. Sit back keep things in front of you but i just don't know if you can give a quarterback that type of throwing lanes you could put 12 guys out there he's going to complete passes i think you got to get after him i don't think there's any other way to play it and just hope you're good enough in the secondary to stand up to it. nc state's going to try it with 10 guys they're going to take a knee <laughs> only got 10 guys out there only takes two <laughs> sure. No, actually, you got to have all the alignment. Oh, I understand. 
They sure would have liked to have done this with the score 17 to 7. It's a whole different game down 17 points. Hoping to regroup. They're at the intermission. As Georgia Tech, led by Joe Hamilton, puts 24 points on the board behind 290 yards of offense. And they did it first running the football to open up this game. Touchdown number one, and it was the powerful one, Sean Gregory. Then it was the quick one, Kelly Campbell. And finally, it was the freshman, Kerry Watkins. 24-7, timeout. This is ABC Sports, home of the Bowl Championship Series. And the curtain goes up again on the Joe Hamilton Show. 24-7, Gary Danielson. Georgia Tech with a lead. He has over 200 yards of total offense, and he's been so impressive. Just as advertised, he does everything for a football team. You know, complete package, running the ball. No way to really stop him unless you put him out of the football game. And he does it. You know, we talk about his height, but it really doesn't mean much. I mean, if you can move the ball like this, look what Joe sees, though, from behind. You know, it's not wide open. Throws the ball to the outside a lot because of that, like a Doug Flutie. But you know what he has to to make the big play? He throws it right up the gut as good as anybody in college football. You look at where Joe is. You know, we thought maybe Joe would try to get outside the pocket a few times to throw the ball. But you can see everything has been right there in the tackle box, mostly behind the sender, but right and left inside the tackle box, Joe has been just as effective. Now, it is important for North Carolina State to establish something here early on. They've had one huge play in the game, biggest play of the game, 70-yard touchdown pass. Jamie Barnett to Corn Robinson. They'll get the first possession here. They'd like to get some decent field position, which they have not had in this game. That'll be over in the corner. Drops it into the end zone, but that's a touchback. Yep. So he got a little bit of a break. Jack Aroot. Well, Brent, you're right about North Carolina State. They're not going to change their defensive philosophy, but what they are going to do is try and build more intensity on the offensive side of the ball. Michael Kane says he wants better execution. Now, George O'Leary for the Georgia Tech, he says, hey, they're doing exactly what I want. The only thing I chided them about in the locker room was the penalties. So Jamie Barnett brings the Wolfpack offense out for the first series. And that will get you beat eventually. Penalty 17 last week against Duke when they two weeks ago when they survived. And today they're right on that track again with penalties. Open with three wide receivers and Rashawn Spikes as the running back. Spikes pull right side, slashes 25, cuts back first down. Powerful run for 12 yards. The Morgan Stanley, Dean Witter, first half stats. Well, you look at him, you know, it's been all Georgia Tech, mostly because of this, and that's Joe Hamilton. When you can run the ball that effectively and have that balance, everybody thinks Joe's just throwing the ball. That allows you to get those 19 first downs, and then the average start, North Carolina State starting on their own 15. They've had the ball seven times in the game. They've had the ball on the 20 or less every time in the game. And Spike's not Gary, eight carries for 49 yards after that 12-yard game. And then they come back and they pound away with the fullback. Right behind the middle of that offensive line. Knudsen, Santos, and Fletcher. And they were blocking for Cotre Jackson, the freshman from Birmingham, Alabama, who's going to get some playing time here. Individually, look at Jamie Barnett, 6 for 13, 128. Remember, 70 of that in one play. So the rest of that and the rest of the passes and pretty much bottled up by this Tech defense. See what they can come up with now on second down and seven. Jackson offset as the fullback. Two wide outs to the left. And here comes Spikes. Good tackle at the 35-yard line by Clay Brooks. You know, I kind of agree that Michael Kane said they need to be more aggressive on offense. Now, they come out running the ball. That's one way to be aggressive. But I sure would like to see some of this speed at wide receiver and Jamie Barnett throw the ball downfield again. They use a couple of tight ends and take the fullback out for O'Kane. That was Felipe Claybrooks, a junior out of Decatur, Georgia. And now the big play man, Corin Robinson. Stretch outside, right in the formation. Third down and six. Middle. Interception. Bad pass. 
Nick Rogers had the pass thrown right to him and Joe Hamilton is only 23 yards away from another score. Little miscommunication between the quarterback and the tight end. Jamie Barnett's trying to get the tight end over the middle right here. He thinks he's going to keep going, but the tight end stops and Rogers gets a gift. Watch the tight end. Comes off, he starts to go, then he stops. The quarterback has no idea that the tight end is going to stop. Barnett's looking, he knows he's got a tight end delay, he's coming across, all of a sudden he wants to lead him, and he doesn't go. First down now for Joe Hamilton. The option look, and the pitch, and that is good for Sean Gregory, who is down at the 17-yard line, hit by Brian Jamison on the play. People never understand the communication. It's not verbal communication, but the communication that a quarterback and a receiver have to have for things to work out well in modern passing. People are reading linebackers, not just the quarterback, but the receivers too. And when they do it differently, bad things happen. Second down for Hamilton. Handing the ball off, and they're pounding for a first down with Sean Gregory. You know, when you look at Joe Hamilton, he's only 5'10", and we ask him, how do you feel about people saying you're too small to play in the NFL? It frustrates me a little bit, but, you know, I, I know I, have, I don't have any control over it, but I just don't understand the way why that you have to be a certain size or uh, look a certain way to, to be successful or, or to move a team or to help a team win. Can't measure the size of a heart either. First down at the 11-yard line for Hamilton and the rambling wreck. He moves, finds the passing lanes, good on the move. Strong arm, Gregory, and nothing doing that time. He was jumped in the hole by Jeff Fisher, number 90. Georgia Tech has been so successful in the red zone all year. 27 times, 22 touchdowns, three field goals, and today, look what they've done. Three touchdowns, three tries, and they're being nice running the ball right now. And Freegen, the offensive coordinator, the architect of this multi-dimensional offense, came back from the San Diego Chargers where he worked with Bobby Ross, helped orchestrate that championship at 90. Play fake, looks in zone, got a man wide open. Got him, touchdown! Kelly Campbell on a defensive secondary mistake comes all the way across and breaks free. And O'Leary's team with an easy touchdown on the 11-yard pass. That's the second touchdown pass of the game for the leading Heisman Trophy candidate. Lloyd Harrison has a man-to-man, -man, but watch what happens. He gets caught up in traffic and gets knocked down by his own guy. Number 21, that's Huff, runs into him, and then all of a sudden it's just an easy pass to the end zone, exactly the way the play is designed. The extra point is good. And instead of jumping right back into this game, North Carolina State turns it over, and Joe Hamilton makes him pay. It's 31-7. Georgia Tech on the second touchdown pass of the game for Hamilton, who's now 14-24 for 144 yards. Timeout. Joe Hamilton moves to the top of the class, and he passes a good quarterback in Sean Jones, who's now attempting to become a professional basketball player in the CBA. <laughs> Joe was introduced to Sean, who was sitting in Friedgen's office one day. You know what Joe said? Hey, let's you and I play a little one-on-one -on -one basketball. And Sean says, I think we can arrange yeah, that. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Sean's a pretty good basketball player, but I'm not going to bet against Joe after watching this. Newman. Patterson. One of the things that's been impressive has been the tackling by Georgia Tech. The coaches emphasized it. Let us go now to Jackaroo, Jack. But Brent, that touchdown catch by Kelly Campbell is even more the impressive when you think about the fact that since the Florida State game, he has been playing with his jaw wired shut. Now, he's not playing with the wires today. In fact, he had the wires removed during the bye week. He has a few rubber bands to keep things together. But this time, he says, at least I can talk to my players and tell them what I think. Before now, he just mumbled like this a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and what did everybody say? We kind of like them that way, Kelly Campbell. First down in 10, and they come back with spikes to go back on that Kelly Campbell story, folks. He suffered that broken jaw in the first half against Florida State and continued to play in that game down in Tallahassee. That's the only game that Georgia Tech has lost this year, and we happened to go back in there for a game after that 
Bobby Bowden and the Seminoles were so impressed with Joe Hamilton that day. And you can see that the one negative that they've had yep. has been this one right here. Last year, they returned seven fumbles for touchdowns alone a year ago. Unbelievable turnout. Second down and nine. Barnett drops it off to the fullback underneath. Jackson, and he pulls his way for a first down, and that was Chris Young, the safety there, gain of 11. This game got away from North Carolina State when that little screen pass, when they needed to pick a first a first down at the end of the half, Michael Kane knew he needed a first down. You give that ball to Joe Hamilton with time to do in the two-minute offense. He's going to score, and the field position has really caught up with them in the football game. Never, I don't know if I've ever seen a game, Brent, where every possession for a team, I think that's eight, has started on the 20-yard line for an Been their story all season. Yep. First down and 10. Comes Mikes again. The 28-yard line. And Wimbush makes the stop. You mentioned how young this Georgia Tech defense is. I mean, they've got freshmen playing. Three true freshmen are playing at starting positions. They've lost a couple linebackers. But it looks like they're starting to get to be a better tackler, and George, Ted Roof is going to demand it. Claybrook's one of the juniors playing, is the fellow who's shaken up on the field down there. There's Ted Roof. So while the injured players mean 10 to 2, we'll take a break. Time out in Atlanta. Well, Claybrook's injury not serious, a shot to the ribs, so he will return. Merrick's Watson is one of the defensive linemen who has felt the lash of the coaches all week here at Georgia Tech. They have pushed hard on the poor tackling by the defensive unit. They have really picked it up here today. Second down and six, and there on the pitch is Spikes, and he slipped one before making it to the 35. And uh, we asked Watson, how do the coaches teach you tackling in practice? We go through a circuit every day in practice, so he teaches us to wrap up, lock your hands, and run through them. That's, that's, that's what he basically teaches us. And don't let go. And just pile up, pile, swarm against the guys, swarm everybody to the ball, swarm defense. Sophomore out of Mount Pleasant, North Carolina, and you know they've hit much better today. You know, interesting, when we talk to a lot of coaches, they say the pro influence is having a negative influence on college tackling. A lot of guys go through for those block tackles. They're not grabbing people anymore. Bad tackling on this play. Very interesting, isn't it, Brent, how the college guys pick up what the pros do, no matter what the coaches say. They watch the pro game, and they see those guys making those type of tackles, and that's what they try. This time, they run up, right up the gut. Spikes has been effective when they've run the ball. Problem is, you know, they haven't had any opportunities. 13 carries for 71 yards, that's a little above his average, but... The way the other team scores points, it's hard to have the patience to do that. Eric Leak replaces Corn Robinson, the one-time running back, is off to the right side of this formation. Second down and one. And Spikes batters straight ahead in the middle Number seven, of the Georgia Tech defense. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Ford F-Series. The best-selling trucks are built Ford Tough. Nike. Dell Computer, pioneering direct internet ideas for your business. Be direct, Dell. And Burger King, when you have it your way, it just tastes better. Georgia Tech 31, North Carolina State 7. First down for the Wolfpack. They'd like to finish off this drive. Brent Ray Robinson's back in the football game, number five. He was the ACC Rookie of the Year last year and has been banged up all year with knee and ankle things. He's really not playing anywhere near to the type of player he was a year ago. He's carried four times today for only three yards. Play fake to him, goes out, incomplete. Pass was underthrown to the tight end, Andy. Vanderveer. Not too much luck thrown to the tight end today for the NC State. You know, one of the other things that you talk to coaches, they say is different for the college game is the pros are so good at using specialists, coming with the nickel and dime packages. You know, George told us that he thinks more defense would be better served by keeping your best 11 on the field and just playing zone defense. He says, we just don't have enough players to go that deep. So blitz 
They option the other way. Here's Robinson. No Doesn't do him. No Ridden books. down. No. Number five. Ray and it's tough on a kid. You know, you're out there trying to play. Chris Young came up, made that tackle at time from the secondary, and you know you're trying to do it from the play as a tailback. You see the brace on Jamie Barnett. Inside option. There's the pitch, but nothing out of your tailback. Next year, I'll bet when the preseason comes up, Ray Robinson says, I was playing 70% last year. Third down and nine with the crowd alive at Atlanta. Zone look behind again. Barnett, middle, got him, Robinson. First down inside the 40-yard line, 15 yards to redshirt freshman Corin Robinson from Belmont, North Carolina. Mark my words, this guy's going to be a great football player before he leaves. From behind, Jamie Barnett, we talked about Joe Hamilton throwing with pressure in his face. That's what Barnett does, and look at that fingertip catch. Four for 108 from Robinson, a future star in the ACC. Watch his catch, Brent. Boom, with the fingertips and the gray gloves that everyone's forced to wear. Now with the first down, inside the Tech 40-yard line. Option. Spikes. Tried to get the corner and could not because of Chris Young, who has played a whale of a game. The strong safety has really come up big in this game against North Carolina State. Man, watch Jamie Barnett. He's not used to running the option. When he pitches this ball, there's too much space between him and the pitch man, the defensive end. You must force the defensive end or linebacker to tackle you. Barnett is pitching it. It's almost like a slow sweep, and that's why Tech is making the cleaning up those plays. Mention Young, seven tackles on the game. Brings a blitz from the right side, and Spikes is going down at the 42-yard line in Claybrook's arms. Felipe's in a rush blitz thing. He's going inside. He just beats the block inside. You can see it's a counter play, and that's a gift. That's the right defense against the right call that time. Claybrooks gets to clean it up. So Mitchell coming, and they simply overwhelmed the blockers on the left side of the offensive line. Third and 13. Rush five. Hit on the delivery, incomplete. Mervis Hester that time did the safety, well, it was a corner blitz, really. He's playing the nickel back, and Barnett did not read it. It's that zone blitz package that teams use that time. Jamie Barnett had his back to it, trying to throw to the left. It got a pop. Scott Earwood, who has been under pressure, trots on the field for punt. Hester back deep. And let's see if... Let's it bounce, and it'll be down inside the five-yard line. Beautiful punt. Covered very well by North Carolina State. 5.48 to go in the third. A 39-yarder. Timeout. Well, the interception came in the end zone when Georgia Tech was attempting to go in early in this game, but look at how efficient they have been since then. Five scores in seven possessions. They've only been forced to punt once. Hamilton out of the shotgun on first down, fires deep, got Dez at the 39-yard line. He put it back in Dez White's hands for 30 more yards. Well, when the pro scouts come in and watch Joe Hamilton, what they should watch is this throw. This thing's 35 yards on a line. Des White's looking down. He sees the free safety away, turns around, boom. Just like a fast break, one bounce pass. That was on the line right there. That was 35 yards in the air, Brent, right on the line. On first down, here he comes now with that option. Look, and this is a keeper for him all the way. 
never hesitated, and he picks up 13 more yards running with the ball. And a reminder, we've got primetime football. We'll start tomorrow on ESPN. Tampa Bay, what a great defense. Eric Zaire steps in at quarterback. They'll be in Detroit. Lions always play well at home under Ross, don't they? Seattle Green Bay, home run, goes back to Green Bay to see what he can do defensively against Brett Favre. Monday, live at 9 Eastern time. When you have a great offense and you get backed up to your own four or five yard line, you know how you look at it? Hey, it's a great opportunity to put some yards, some stats on the board because right now they don't believe anything can stop. Them. And also to bleed time off the clock the way this is going on. And here comes Sean Gregory. Now remember they lost Joe Burns and Philip Rogers, but it looks like Sean Gregory is going to be a very fine runner with William Pennell making the stop. But Gregory, 14 carries for 79 yards in this game. You know, we were talking to Ralph Regan. It's kind of interesting. He does a little bit of that self-deprecating thing, you know, because he's interviewed for some head coaching jobs. He goes, you know, I'm a little too bald. Got a little bit of too much of this right here. He says, I don't think I interview well. Circle that brain. Oh, yeah, well, that's, that's exactly what's right. Okay. That's where it all that's, is. That's what he's got. But, all right. But you know what? A guy named Joe Tiller's got that type of... Oh, hold back. He's got a man. Touchdown, Georgia Tech. Kelly Campbell, his second touchdown of the game. A 39-yarder as they break him wide open for the score. And now Joe Hamilton with three touchdown passes. This is just too easy, isn't it? Little play action pass, you get a drive going. You talked about Ralph Friedgen's brain. He pulls out the right call at the right time. This is not easy. You know, this just isn't guessing. They don't just call plays willy-nilly. He's got a plan, and he gets it going. Manje adds the extra point. Well, Ralph Friedgen certainly sent in the right play this time for Joe Hamilton. As they go 91 yards in four plays four and a minute and a half. And you talk about somebody breaking wide open. Here came the speedster, Campbell. Free safety right there, sniffing the run play that time. Campbell goes by him, and Brian Williams had no chance to catch up. Look at the free safety, sniffing the run play. Boom, that's, that's about as open as you're going to ever get. Hello, Ron Dane. <laughs> Hello, Drew Brees. Yeah. I am here to stay, my friends. I am here to stay. And you know, Brent, we were kind of finished the story about Ralph Regi. He kind of makes fun of himself a little bit. You mentioned he's got the brain. He calls the plays. Well, the guy down at Purdue, or up at Purdue from here, Joe Tiller doesn't look the mold. He's doing a pretty good job, isn't he? I'd say. I think a lot of teams would be lucky to have this guy as a head coach. They stop looking at that physique and start winning football. Yeah, games. absolutely. <laughs> then he becomes funny at the band exactly. and they fight exactly. him. You know, hey, John Madden, you know, <laughs> what did he look like in Oakland? He had a ticket. You know what? Down that credential all Ralph the should start doing his interviews over the phone if he doesn't like it. <laughs> uh, uh, he's a wonderful, wonderful coach. He really is. Did a great job with Bobby Ross when, uh, when Ross was the head man here, and now George O'Leary's got him. And uh, O'Leary talks about him, how, how what Gary's been saying. He knows how to attack a defense. He knows what they're going to be in. Like, he obviously did that time. He caught exactly what he wanted and broke Campbell wide open that time. Back in the end zone now for Patterson. And he'll bring it on out for State. Out to the 27. Jack Aroot, my friend, how you doing? Brent, I'm doing great. And this has got to be a great day for a Heisman candidate like Joe Hamilton. But you don't ever have to worry about Hamilton getting a swelled head. All he has to do is go home like he did in 1997 after winning the most valuable trophy, the most valuable player trophy. He came home and he said to his dad, hey, look, I won this. You know what his dad did? Gave him a shovel and said, here, re-gravel the driveway. <laughs> oh, yes. Humility. That's how you get it, right? Great to talk to him. Very outgoing young man. Uh, when we went down and uh, had a lunch down in the cafeteria with Mike Finn, the outstanding SID here, you could see him. Joe was jumping around table to table, yeah. talking to basketball players. Everybody was in the room. Now Jamie comes back deep for Robinson. Oh, knocked away. And he'd have been off to the races, but Hester stuck a hand in. Let's get an update. Let's send you to John Saunders. John? Brent, it's the Burger King play of the day, and watch this. A tremendous play by Penn State quarterback Rashard Casey. Good to pass, nothing doing. Dodges one, two, three, four, five hands, and then runs out of the backfield. Doesn't get sacked, but how about this? A touchdown run of 34 yards, making something out of nothing. That's your Burger King play of the day. Brent. Hello, Bourbon Street. Ba, 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 ba. And why do, why do coaches play two quarterbacks? 
when the second quarterback does things like that. Second down and 10, Nittany Lions rolling. Back now is Barnett on the first down pass play. And he put it in Brian Peterson's hands, and the freshman picked up 16 yards on the play. Six o'clock Eastern time, and Georgia Tech has had it all their way. 38-7 behind Joe Hamilton, who was 16-26. Three touchdowns, one interception, 212 yards. And on top of it, he is Tech's leading rusher. In fact, he's the game's leading rusher. 11 carries for 83 yards today. That's a career for me in college. That's it's unbelievable. First down and 10 for Barnett and the Wolfpack. Short drop, snaps it off into Leak's hands. Leak with the quick. Down to the 44-yard line and a first down on the 11-yard pass play. Eric Leak started the Florida State game as a tailback. He was a running back. Then he was a wide receiver. They were going to move him back to running back again because of the injuries, but he's playing out there, I think, because of the inexperience at wide receiver back out of wide receiver. I really thought North Carolina State would be able to move the ball on Georgia Tech. I think the two weeks of practice and Georgia Leary focusing some guys on you might not play if you don't tackle has turned this Tech defense into a little different looking team. Carlos Doggett checks into the backfield for State. The carry by Doggett Busts a tackle, slips another one, and he is down at the 46-yard line. And we'll remind everybody next week, 3.30 Eastern, you get a chance to see the Joe Hamilton show again. They go up to Virginia, but they've got a pretty good running back up there. Another fellow by the name of Jones. That's next Saturday. 3.30 Eastern, there's the rest of our lineup. So check your local listings for the game in your area. But you folks down here in the southeast, you'll be seeing Joe Hamilton on the Ramblin' Wreck again. You're right, and... As Georgia Tech looks like they're going to walk away with this football game, the schedule, as we'll see just a little bit later, starts to tilt their way a little bit. Games are tough, but in the right spot. Now Barnett on the hard roll, comes back against the... Oh, oh what a pop that time by Young. Oh, what a game he's played in that defensive backfield. Well, that was one. You're Brian Peterson. You're a true freshman. You were a high school quarterback. Now you're going to see what it's like to play wide receiver because Barnett hung him out to dry on this one. Slows down, the ball's high, and there's Chris Young says, that's easy. That is when you find out if you're a gutsy wide receiver because you knew you were going to get popped. But if Joe Hamilton's been the star offensively, there's your star defensively in this game. Third down. Jamie Barnett needs eight yards. didn't get it. Incomplete. Hester making another play in that defensive backfield and uh, we've talked about Georgia Tech now eighth in the BCS Mikeys. Remember one two is where you want to be there and their strength the schedule goes up but Clemson right yeah. there Gary. And Clemson at home they're getting better right. and then right here that big one on November 20th Saturday right there it may all come down to that for a BCS poll and the Heisman Trophy be a huge huge game you did a game around thanksgiving with doug Flutie. a fake they hit harrison first down one man to beat and he's down at the 17 yard line and i believe a penalty flag came flying maybe a face mask a 36 yard gain on the fake punt they put it into lloyd harrison's hands their outstanding defensive back Lloyd Harrison probably, I don't know exactly where he is in this formation, but the plate is going to go out this way. Lloyd Harrison was the end man in the line of scrimmage, fakes the block, and it's like a screen pass, Brett. Right out there, and perhaps, nice play, but a little too late. 2.01 to go in the third, down 38-7. First half. And they'll tack on the... Uh, yards face mask right at the end of the play here to see it yeah that's the uh the return man marvius hester who grabbed the face mask on it robinson is the running back and this is the first time that north carolina state has been inside the 20-yard line today 
Their only touchdown came on a 70-yard bomb in the first half. Robinson ganged up on at the 11-yard line. Ryzen, number 96, one of the tacklers in there. Well, they haven't been in there much, Brent, today, and we didn't get a chance to see how good they are at it, but they have been effective this year. Not a lot of attempts, but 22 out of 23 times they've scored. That's pretty good, but as you said, it was only one long pass. It's been the only offense that Michael Kane has been able to muster today. Second down and eight. Three wide receivers. going to score. Touchdown State. That's making something out of nothing. Carlos Dogg at that time went the wrong way and I think that's what made the play go. The linebacker stepped the wrong way and all of a sudden Barnett knows he can't pitch it. Remember we've been talking he's been pitching too early. He didn't have anybody to pitch to this time. Watch this. He's going to go the wrong way. See he thinks there's a counter. Barnett realizes and said I'm stuck keeping the ball. He's stuck to get the touchdown. So Jamie Barnett has passed for a touchdown and a run for a touchdown. And all sorts of yellow flags come flying. Kent Passingham set to kick the extra point. Dead ball, false start on the offense, five yards. Jamie Barnett took it in from the 10 yard line for State's second touchdown. Passingham adds the extra point. And the kick is good. 38 14. So Barnett carried only a couple of times for 17 yards but this is best run touchdown state timeout okay coach now how do you take that score and convert it to momentum for the final quarter you got to stop them on defense and that's that's something we haven't done at all all day long we got you know we've got to get them to make a mistake turn the ball over give us a short drive or something but Right now, you know, we haven't slowed them down. That's the key. If we can, if we can get them three downs and out, or stop them here, get the ball back, then I think we've got a little momentum. What about offensively, though? Do you go now for big plays, or you just stay well, the way we, you? We've got to throw the ball. No, we've got to throw the ball a little bit more. And, and I, they're not going to give you a lot of big plays. You still got to nickel and dime them. But I think we will get a little bit bigger chunks in the passing game. Thanks, coach. Thanks, Very gracious, Mike O'Kane. You wouldn't get many coaches being blown out 38-14 who would take the time to talk to the fans. Forget us. Take us out of that equation. That's you at home watching this yeah. game. And you know, Brent, you judge a team by how they play when there's adversity going on. And watch this team for Michael Kane. They will still be disciplined. They'll still run their routes right. They'll still do all the right things. That anybody can play when you're ahead. Exactly. It's how you coach and play when you're behind. Yeah, front running's easy, folks. Yeah, you bet. We used to always say that on Sunday. Might be an onside the way Georgia Tech is lined up here. They've got some of their good hands people out there right now. And the way the ball's placed right here, it's on the ground. You see it fell over once. Now he's reteated it in a regular position. He probably will kick it down. Let's we'll see what Bobby Moore does. And uh, Georgia Tech pointing to just what you were saying, Terry. And they loosen up a little bit. Yeah, he's going to Lover and Des White go back deep. White from the six. Going to try to get a right return. Lover trying to get him, and he is smacked hard, and that's just what you say. They came hitting that time, and you know, Joe Hamilton, his last four passes, folks, he's been unbelievable here. <laughs> he's thrown for 80-some yards. I mean, look at that right now. There is Three touchdowns the, uh, in the last four passes. It's unbelievable, with one interception of the game, and that was uh, when they were going in for their first touchdown of the game, and Harrison picked it off. And, of course, remember that last touchdown was set up by the fake punt. 48 seconds to go. 38-14. Here's Hamilton back to work. They'll try to bleed some clock now with Sean Gregory. Huge hole. And just like Coach O'Kane said, we haven't stopped him yet today. Harrison finally gets to him for those 17 more yards. You know, huge hole, but it wasn't where the play was designed to go. So now you give that to the running back because this thing was designed to go right up there between the tackle and the defensive end.
pretty well stopped, but because that passing game is so good, the secondary was nowhere to be found, and you just pop it outside, and there it goes. And Gregory, four more yards, and he'll have a 100-yard day. And Campbell with six catches for 84 yards. Yeah, everybody, just dial a play, and everything works. Gregory again, there's a 100-yard day. Ten more yards, Williams making the stop. And the final half minute here of the third quarter. Sean Gregory had 150 as you look at defensive coordinator right there. That's uh, Jeff Snipes for North Carolina State. Right now, as easy it is for Ralph Regan, it's as hard as it is on the defensive side. Try to find a defense that works. 421 yards of offense for Georgia Tech here today. They have given up 319 to North Carolina State, but if you average that out per play, that means that Coach O'Leary's offense under Freegen is averaging more than seven yards a play in this game. That's unbelievable. Quarter's going to end. You know, one of the interesting stories about Joe Hamilton is George O'Leary says that when he comes to the sideline in one of these breaks, or after a timeout, he says it's some of the best football talk you've ever heard between Joe Hamilton and Ralph Friedrich. He says, I like to just get in the huddle and listen. Well, he'll get a chance because we've come to the end of the third quarter. Georgia Tech takes advantage of early opportunities after an interception. There's the first one to Campbell. Then he breaks wide open for the second one of the quarter. Finally, Barnett answers. We'll be back after this message and a word from our ABC stations. We start the final quarter, 38-14. Georgia Tech leading North Carolina State, and George Godsey has replaced Joe Hamilton. Out of Tampa Jesuit High School, the sophomore are going to get some snaps. And Gregory, the 100-yard rusher, for three yards. And uh, how about the Fighting Irish today, John Saunders in New York? What do you got? Well, Brent, after starting one and three, they've got it going. They've won 35 straight against Navy, though, and found themselves down until Jerry Jackson runs out of trouble, just lofts it down to about the four-yard line. Jay Johnson takes it in, and the Irish have now won four straight and 36 straight over Navy. Brent. Mm, a little bit closer, though, John, than a lot of folks thought, my friend. Here comes Gregory, and uh, he's popped at the 36-yard line. Oh, Brent, you said you were busy last night working for the game, but, <laughs> you know, I mean, that's shameless, trying to shine. Where's my sign? Where's my sign? Oh, wait just a minute. I saw some of your fans down oh, here with their Purdue the colors. Look at this. Yeah, Gary, baby. There you are. <laughs> that is Throw me another there. pick, Gary, baby. <laughs> Shameless. Uh, third down and three. Uh, <laughs> so we'll get to take a look at the backup quarterback here. And uh, no first down as State jumps him. Is it too early to take Joe no, out? I, I don't think so. I don't think it has any bearing. He's got enough yards. Not going to make any difference uh, how many more yards he gets in this football game. What's going to make a difference for Joe Hamilton is that he stays healthy and he wins the rest of the football game. I think that's what's going to win him the Heisman. Right, here's fourth down and uh, we'll see what they come up with here. The ball is on the North Carolina State. 35. Uh, you, you were talking more as it's too early to take him out of the game because it's still a football game. Is yeah, that I, I, going? that's why I was asking. Yeah. I don't think so. I think they should uh, okay. be able to run the ball with anybody. Yeah, Gregory did just that. First down, clock stops. I think if Georgia Tech was having trouble running the ball, they probably would have left him in there. But when they came into this drive, the balance of the Tech game, they came into this drive 219 yards rushing, 212 yards passing. Well, former you know, quarterback, yeah, former quarterback Jermaine Crenshaw, number 12, checks in as a wide receiver, along with Will Glover. So O'Leary using his backups except for Gregory. Number 32, Sean Gregory on the carry. 
I know when uh, Jermaine Crenshaw checked into uh, school and was recruited here at Georgia Tech, there are a lot of folks who thought he was going to replace Joe Hamilton, but the coaching staff didn't feel that he progressed enough as a signal caller, so they watched him play the role of Peter Warwick the week before the Florida State game. And he was so good imitating Warwick that they got to talking in the staff meetings that we should try this young man. And so here he is as a wide receiver. Second down, faked by Gatsi, and he faked his own team, but not the fellas in the red. Well, that worked for NC State, but it didn't work for Georgia Tech. Let's take a look at the Dell game solution and see how they played out. Has Georgia Tech made North Carolina State pay for blitzing? They haven't done it. No factor. Have they stayed with the running box? Yes. And has NC State forced Joe to be patient? No. That's a big check for Georgia Tech, and that's why Georgia Tech is winning this football game. When you get three touchdown passes and four throws, that's not patience. That's just destroying the defensive team. Yeah, absolutely. Throw down at 16. Got Z fire and the catch is made by John Myers, a junior out of Stone Mountain, Georgia. His brother is a defensive back here at uh, Georgia Tech. Jeremy, who is a freshman. Oh, Brent, one of the things that Georgia Leary does during the game is watch the blocking. There he is right there. He stays behind the play and watches the blocking angles. Many he suggests plays or runs from his experience as a defensive coach what they should go to. He spread the field for Godsey on fourth down, and he goes for it. And it's intercepted by North Carolina State. I believe the momentum yeah, after worked. Scott made the pick took him into the end zone, but they threw the bag at the, the two-yard line. <laughs> and once they do that, school's out, folks. They're coming the, out on the 20. They threw the bag. That says it all. You don't have to say anything more. I think you're right, though. This ball was caught, matched up to the top, it's the fade to the top, the ball is a little bit underthrown, good coverage out there by Huff. The ball's a little bit, I'm sorry, Tony Scott, now what, he catches it, his momentum, well, that really, I think to be fair to the official, that probably could have gone either way, and yeah. probably a fair call. It was, it was quite a ways yeah, to go it really was. back into the end zone. The bag, I mean, the, the bag, bag says it all, right? You just hey, look for the bag. bag. Yeah, here it is, <laughs> you know. <laughs> As Yogi used to say, they just move those bags back three feet, there'd be no close plays, right? <laughs> thought they were supposed to throw yellow flags. Where's the bag coming from? First down at 10 for North Carolina State. So the first down at 10 here for uh, Jamie Barnett. They'll come out from the end zone. Incomplete of the second down. Well, Gary, this is our first opportunity together to watch Joe Hamilton this year. Your feelings about him and as a Heisman Trophy candidate. You know, like also. Ralph Regan said to us, you know, the pro scouts say, Ralph, what do you think? Can he play in, in pro football? He said, turn on the film. Watch this guy play. And I, and I just think even before Peter Warwick got hurt, this guy was the front runner because he's done it over his career, and he's definitely the most valuable player yeah. in college football. You know, I want to say something about Peter Warwick. I don't think that he automatically should be eliminated. No, I don't I, think so. If he comes up with a huge game down in Gainesville, uh, you know, we should measure him strictly on what he does on the athletic field right now the rest of the way. No doubt about it. And slipping all the way was Brian Peterson. So it's incomplete. The ball hit the ground. The linesman was right there, and he had a pretty good look at it. Brent, though, you can't overlook the fact that Peter Wark missed two games. The yeah, team won true. two games without him. And, and I don't think this Georgia Tech team, they're a nice team. They're definitely a top-10 team with that guy. I don't know if they're a top-10 team without him. This is the time of year also that it gets a little bit different on who you root for if it, you're a Georgia Tech team, isn't it? Isn't that the case? Yeah, huh? exactly. Strange bedfellows late in the year because of the BCS. So on third down and 10, and almost intercepted at the 15-yard line, Young with a chance, and that would have capped off a terrific Broken day. There are two rules of playing quarterback. You just can't break. 
You can't throw the ball deep without accounting for the free safety. And you can't throw the ball to the sideline if you don't throw it in time. And that time, Jimmy Barnett almost got an interception because he threw late to the sideline. Should have been picked off. Scott Yearwood standing in the state end zone. Hester set to return. From the 47. 40 yard line. And down at the 35 yard line. So we'll take a break. Georgia Tech in complete control. 38 to 14. Timeout. Well, near the conclusion, we'll select the Chevrolet player of the game for each team, and Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each University General Scholarship. On the beginning of this year, Chevrolet also donates two $1,000 high school scholarships. So that's much appreciated with uh, Coach O'Kane. Very disappointed in the Wolfpack's performance here today. Here's the handoff to Ford. Tough run by the youngster to the 16-yard line. Sidney Ford had to give up his redshirt season because the team's in the running for, you know, a BCS uh, spot. And uh, the BCS is very interesting right now. Well, it certainly is. Georgia Tech, you know, in the top ten, everybody, of course, is chasing Florida State and Penn State. And their hottest pursuer, Virginia Tech, the Hokies, very close. If either of them stumble, they yep. figure to jump into one of those top two spots in the chance of the championship game in New Orleans. Here's Ford again. Slashing oh, run. Oh, beautiful run. Still going to the one-yard line. So not only did Sean Gregory rush well today, gaining 116 yards, but now it is the freshman, Sidney Ford. Remember, Sidney Ford, a true freshman, finally healthy this year, just going to slant to the left side of your screen. He's running to his right. He led the state last year in rushing as a high school player, scored 34 touchdowns. You get an idea what type of future he has as a running back here for Tech. So even with the backups in the game, Georgia Tech with 480 yards of total offense here today. Ford, 46 yards on the game. Going to try to get him a touchdown. Got it. Well, you give up a year of eligibility. You run the ball well, they give you a touchdown. That's fair, isn't it? It certainly is. <laughs> no, let's give a lot of credit to that offensive line for Georgia Tech, too, in this football game. We said they had to stay with their blocks to run the ball effectively. This offensive line, I think the addition and getting back Brent Key has really helped the offensive line. The guard that's been hurt all year with the back. Thank Gary Monjay. That's still another extra point. 45 to 14. One more look here. I think Sidney Ford was a little bit tired, but he had just enough gas to get it into the end zone. This drive was all Ford. Time out. So there's a member of that offensive line who missed the game and returned. Brent Key, number 70, out of New Hyde Park. And then John Carmen and Chris Brown, the tackles. Jason Birch was the other guard, along with Key. Noah King, the center. Gary talked about the offensive line. Fine job. You know, I did that the little thing down in the field. Never happened. <laughs> you know, with the old blocking thing where they run out, there's a big Brown right there. Joe Hamilton's too smart for that thing to happen. You said it right. You get experience. You know how not to run into the Fielded at the four-yard line by Ellerby. So now we've talked about the BCS and Georgia Tech impressing folks with this high-scoring, high-octane attack. You can see where they are there. Number eight in those rankings. There's the point total. You can see how close Virginia Tech is to Penn State should either of them stumble. And, of course, you've got Tennessee and Florida. You've got an unbeaten Kansas State. A lot of things still to unfold in this season, Gary. Some very interesting things also. If you're Georgia Tech, do you root for Florida? I know if they win the ACC games, everybody here at Tech is going to root for Florida State to beat Florida because that way they can get into that other BCS spot assuming Florida State goes to the national championship. Backup quarterback, Tavis Sanders. And his first pass is incomplete. And uh, let's send you back to New York now and John Saunders. John? 
Brent, I know how you follow golf in the Tour Championship presented by Southern Company. This is Tiger Woods. That was an eagle putt. Doesn't drop, but he taps in for the birdie to go to 13 under par with a three-shot lead heading into the final round. This will be the 12th time he's had the lead after 54 holes. The last 10, he has won. You can see it all tomorrow here on ABC at 3 o'clock Eastern. Brent. Yeah, John, has anybody had a better year since the glory days of Jack Nicklaus than uh, Tiger Woods? Already won six times on the tour. Just continues. It's uh, Gary, I know you're an avid golfer and a I fan. Am. It's just, just amazing what Tiger does. Well, you know, in, in a way, Tiger Woods is one of those guys that if he's not going to beat himself, that's just like 10 out of 13. It's just like this a little bit of Georgia Tech offense. The only way to beat him is to outscore him. He's not going to mess it up, and that's the only way to beat, I think, this Georgia Tech team. Florida State beat them by scoring more points because you can't stop them. They're too good on offense. Yeah, Barnett tried and failed. Now he's on the sideline over there with 8.20 to go and watching the backup for North Carolina State, a freshman out of Stone Mountain, Georgia. Blitz got him on the release, but he delivered it to Peterson just short of the first down. Once beaten, Georgia Tech rolling over North Carolina State in an ACC game, 45-14 to 14 before a sellout crowd in Bobby Dodd Stadium. Joe Hamilton, one of the leading Heisman Trophy candidates, throws for 212 yards, three touchdowns, and then adds 83 yards rushing. So 295 total yards for the number one ranked quarterback in the land. Fourth down, and State will go for it. With nothing doing. Georgia Tech ball. So we're going to take a break. Joe Hamilton has made his Heisman argument today. You can see what Drew Brees did in his victory over Minnesota. Ron Dane leads Wisconsin against Northwestern. There's your three leading candidates, and Peter Warwick goes tonight for Florida State. Time out. Day of three. 7.23 to go, leading 45-14. Backup quarterback George Godsey brings the second unit up to the line here with a first down from the 26-yard line. The headline, of course, will be Joe Hamilton's performance today. There's a penalty on this play. It'll come back. But, you know, we asked Joe about whether or not he was rooting for the other Heisman Trophy candidates, or do you pull against them? And here's what Joe said. You know, you want college football to be exciting for everybody to watch it. And for me to go out there and say... You know, I hope Sean Alexander has a bad game. Ron Dean has a bad game. For my hopes, for my Heisman chances, that, that'll be selfish. That'll be real selfish. I mean, just, you know, let, let's enjoy college football and, and let's make it exciting. A little glimpse at the, uh, at the young man's personality. He, he really is electric, and, and, and he played electrically today. And, you know, started out a little bit slow in this game, kept the chains moving, and then all of a sudden he exploded. Both quarterbacks... Took a little punishment in this football game. We always chart that, see how many times they get it. And considering how many option plays Joe Hamilton has to run, that's just part of the course for him. I, could you, you know, Joe Hamilton, I think he'd make any runs. I mean, I could see him in Nebraska making that thing go, too. Oh, absolutely. You know, I mean, there's no offense that Joe could make. It reminds me a little bit of Tommy Frazier. He He's a better thrower, too. Oh, yeah. Here's uh, Ford, and you know, the school has actively promoted Joe huh, as a uh, Heisman Trophy candidate. So we asked head coach Jojo O'Leary how Joe has handled the Heisman hype here in Atlanta. It's a team game. He understands that. And I think he's dealt with it very well. He very rarely talks about it, and we don't talk about it. And he just goes out and performs. And I think the thing he understands is that we have to win for him to win. And I think that's the point you made, Absolutely. Gary. I've been saying that. You know, the only guy that hasn't had a... You know, like a 10 and 1 or an undefeated season that won the Heisman was Ricky Williams last year. And he just did it with so much staff they had to give it to him. But I think this year, with Wisconsin winning, as you see, another penalty, I think you got to have a winning record to win it this year. 10 and 1. Yeah, coming back because of the penalty, let us check in with Jack Aru. Jack, 
Well, Brent, you and Gary were talking about the fact that George O'Leary tinkered with his team during the bye week. Maybe the most important meeting was held a week ago this past Sunday. No coaches were involved, just the players. It was players only. They got together and they said, look, we need to go out there with the intensity that the coaches are talking, talking about. But most importantly, we need to go out and feel like we deserve to win. So far today, they seem to be a different team. Yeah, exactly. Well, you know, they, this was a team that was shook up. I mean, you know, North Carolina, Duke, they pretty much thought those were games, you know, as a top 10 team, they were going to breeze through, and they were pushed right to the limit by North Carolina and Duke to win those football games. So here you are, Georgia Tech, you're top 10. If you don't feel good about yourself, all of a sudden a game like this gets you feeling good. We see that 23-14, Florida leading Georgia with the time running out on that one in Jacksonville after the holding penalty. Godson throws complete. Kerry Watkins, redshirt freshman, but that is well short of the first down. An ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by the new Impala by Chevrolet. Let's go for a drive. Ameritrade, believe in yourself. Applebee's, you belong at Applebee's. And Bud Light, for the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. You know, as much as we talk about Joe, uh, Joe Hamilton, I, I feel a little bad for Jamie Barnett. This guy is a very gifted thrower. He just does not have the tools around him. Those two injuries to his two wide receivers has changed his game this year. Third down and nine with Gatsy in the shotgun. And a first down. He delivered one to John Myers beautifully. Nice throw over there. It's not an easy throw to make to that right sideline. He put a little, little mustard on that one. John Myers, the junior, the older brother of Jeremy Myers, who is starting at free safety in this football game. Tech has two sets of brothers on the team, Philip Rogers and Nick Rogers, and there's younger brother Jeremy. Final five minutes as Georgia Tech, with only one loss on its record, will add another victory. Good tackle at the 19-yard line, and of course, time permitting. Stay tuned for the thrifty car rental postgame report with Terrence Holt, Tory Holt's brother, making a stop. We'll be checking in with John and Terry, and of course, tomorrow, all eyes will be on Tory and the Rams. They go into Nashville for their <laughs> toughest game of the year against the once-beaten Titans of Tennessee. You are loyal, my friend. I'll tell you that right now. Middle name. Right. Are you going to follow me in my future career? Absolutely. Like? Absolutely. <laughs> am, I on the, am I on the Rolodex from now on? You're my new best friend. <laughs> Second half is 13. <laughs> Here comes Ford. Swatted down at the, uh, at the 19th. Have you noticed how good our audio has been up oh, here in the booth today? Oh, yeah. I think that Stan Johnson up here has been the audio technician of Stan the day. Stan the man. Stan the man up here Just in the booth. Oh, well, look you at know, him. here's the ringleader, Wendell Stevens, down there going back to North Carolina. Look at that board, folks. Oh, yeah, he is working it. Too. Look, look at that. that. he got a camera. Well, you know what he did? He turned the lights on so, so we you could see, see him. That. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, out in the control room, we've got a couple guys at the controls. We'll check in on them here in a minute. Third down. 3.40 to go in the game. Godsey juggled out of bounds. <laughs> Incomplete. We want to thank uh, our outstanding producer down there. Take a wave, yep. Bob Goodrich over there yep. in the corner. There's And next to him, Drew Essica. There's Bobby. There's, There's Drew Bob. right here. Right there. There we go. Glenn Furman over there at the board. And uh, all the helpers down there. The Z-man, Drew Kaliski, and our rook. That was his hand. You see his hand come in there? Yes. No, Drew got it in there. <laughs> got residuals now. Here comes our field goal. Luke Bonje. 34-yarder. He's got it. Just a little ice cream with their ringleader looking on. Time out, folks. Well, at 48 to 14, some of our fans have probably left this for an early dinner, but I know in Alvin, South Carolina, yeah, we're they still are there. still watching the end of this game. That, of course, Joe Hamilton's hometown over there now. 48-14, 3.30 to go. They're headed over to the MARTA. They're yeah. going to catch that one train they run on. I know they're not going to the airport, I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they're going to go over to the uh, varsity and get an early burger, right? Just take it by and get a cool one. We may have plenty of time to get in one of those, too. <laughs> This one's going to be returned by Patterson from the goal line. Just short of the 20-yard line. 
Fred, remember the open? Jack went down there. Look, look at this free spread. Look how savvy they are in Alpha. I mean, they got the Joe picture right there. Got the grandkids. Little advertising right there. What else do you notice here? There's a schedule over oh, yeah, there. There's a schedule right there. Yeah. They got the Jasper Parnovic hat tilted back. Get the good exposure. I mean, these people watch television. I'll tell you, they know how to take advantage of an open. So if you're ever close to Alvin, go see Tommy Lee Kinlaw. <laughs> For eight bucks, you can get the best haircut in South Carolina. <laughs> Tommy all, Lee, the bill is in the mail, my yeah, friend. And all the advice you don't need. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wonderful family. Mom and Pop and Grandfather Silas watching young Joe here today. It was a pleasure to come to do this game just to meet him and uh, get an opportunity to find out what he's all about. Kind of affectionately called Joe Hamilton around here the mayor because he runs everything, doesn't he? <laughs> That's that. <laughs> he may be the governor before he leaves. <laughs> That's right. There's another one into Robinson's hands and a mistake, and he's off to the races, but they've got the angle on him, and he is out of bounds. So the young man who scored on a 70-yarder is stopped by freshman Corey Collins, but this a 60-yard gain on the pass from Sanders. Jatavis Sanders this time, little simple out pass, misjudged to the outside. The corner's got to come to the outside shoulder. Goes way too late to knock that ball down, and all of a sudden it's a sprint, and uh, this Robinson guy is going to be a great one before he leaves the ACC. Look at just the left side. Go for the interception, you pay the price. Jerry, look at his stats. Yeah, 168. <laughs> That's pretty good, isn't it? I mean, he's average, came into the game averaging the 18 yards a catch, and he's going up. He's going a good direction. Play fake. Wide open on the other side, Eric Leak. Leak takes a hit. But it's another first down. And a reminder tomorrow on ABC, don't miss the season premiere of the Grand Prix of figure skating. The road to gold begins as the World Cup Olympic eligibles compete in the first of six events. Michelle Kwan, Sarah Hughes, Michael Weiss, and Elvis Stoiko headline the field of the National Car Rental Skate America tomorrow at 1 Eastern, 3 Pacific. You know, Brent, you were talking about Crenshaw. The same thing happened with Corey Robinson. He played Peter Warwick a year ago when he was being redshirted. You see his stats, and that's where he first took notice when he was the scout team Peter Warwick. That's a good way to get in the game, isn't it? Isn't it? <laughs> Gary, you'd ask about North Carolina State's uh, yeah, remaining Yeah, I, I really, I really want to point out that NC State is still in the running for a bowl game. They have to win seven games. They have five. They have three remaining couple of games at home here that they have a shot this last one right here at east carolina that will be very interesting very interesting game michael kane had to play that opening game at texas a game they stole basically stole still in the running for a bowl game second down one hand bobble juggle go Juggling touchdown for Co. Trey Jackson, the freshman from Birmingham. Boy, this is like a kind of like a circus going here, isn't it? Juggling. All we got is we need some clowns. Show those guys with those uh, yellow hats again, right here. Coming right down the gut. The two wide receivers are going to go wide to the outside. Just inside is the juggling man. Jackson with a perfect throw. <laughs> that was something. Here's Passingham. So, one for pride for the Wolf Pack. And it's really nice to see your red, your true freshman quarterback, Jatavis Sanders, throw the ball like that. Tech's on the extra point. 48-21 is our count with 1.53 to go, and we'll take a break here in Atlanta. 48-21 with 1.53 to go. And North Carolina State with a little bit of a juggling act. Here yeah, one more freshman. time, the fullback sneaks right out. You remember the two wide receivers to the outside. Pretty nice play. Isolation play runs right by the linebacker. Just throw the ball and put a little juggling act on, and that's great concentration. You know, Jatavis uh, Sanders, the easy backup quarterback, a true freshman quarterback, actually thought he was going to go to Notre Dame. He was a great high school option quarterback. Notre Dame was kind of slow playing him with C.J. Leak, who they thought they were going to get in Notre Dame. So he signs with North Carolina State. Notre Dame gets neither of the guys. So we'll look at the quarterback of the future. 
of the North Carolina State. This is Barnett's final season of eligibility. The onside kick by the Wolfpack. And Georgia Tech fields it at the 44-yard line. So a reminder about next week here on ABC, you'll get to see Joe Hamilton and Georgia Tech do it again at Virginia at 3.30 Eastern. We've got the rest of this lineup, too. You got a little fish you can flip around, check in on some of these other games. Wisconsin-Purdue is going to be very interesting. Dane against Breeze. They go at it next week. So Joe Hamilton will see what he can do against Virginia. Remember last year, Breeze against Wisconsin? What did he throw, 80-some passes? 80 <laughs> I threw less than 80 my first year. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. And they <laughs> hand it off to Gordon Klinkscale. Well, we've got a minute here on our Chevrolet players of this game. Certainly no surprise here. Joe Hamilton for Georgia Tech and Lloyd Harrison, their outstanding defensive back. Six tackles, one interception, one catch for 36 yards. And. Those two young men receive $1,000 contribution in their name to each University General Scholarship Fund. At the beginning of this year, Chevrolet will donate 1000 to two high schools and uh, want that school back in Alvin, South Carolina. Oh, yeah. I appreciate that. Of course, and I gave Lloyd Harrison two knockdowns. You gave him one. Right? We, then what you said it was a drop ball. <laughs> <laughs> Lloyd, I said it was a knockdown. Second down and six. Final minute now coming up. We had a chance to thank some of our people. Remember, the executive producer of ABC Sports is Howard Katz, the executive producer of college football, John Filippelli. And we've told you that Bob Goodrich was our capable producer. He also is the coordinating producer of college football, directed by Drew Esikoff, T.D. Glenn Furman, associate producer Chris Pfeiffer, who went up to Alvin, South Carolina, did an outstanding job. Associate director Brian Gordon, who sat in the seat for a while, he did very, very well. Production manager Lynn Cadden, technical operations manager Jim Licata, the Z-man of the Rook, did their usual outstanding job preparing this for this game as Georgia Tech brings the clock on down. Our stats man, all the way from Phoenix, Roger Riley. And the Mo, he was very sad for a while. Brian Mobleson, our spotter out of Michigan. Computer stats, Greg Rothberg. College football today produced by Charles Coplin, directed by Calvin Haywood, and the New York remote coordinator, Vince Diderio. I hope you've enjoyed a victory by Georgia Tech. Let's go down now to Jackaroo, Jack. Well, Joe, congratulations. An outstanding day for you. Thank you, man. I just, you know, I think we came out here and we made a statement. We needed to play well. And, you know, we had a uh, couple weeks there where we struggled and we weren't comfortably winning. I think we came out today and we executed as a team and did the things it took to win. Joe, how important was the team of the team meeting, players only, last Sunday? Very important. It was just the fact that, you know, it was no uh, reason to panic, but we hadn't been playing well. And we knew it was a five week. You know, five-game season, and uh, we need to win these games to reach our goal. Well, I know he wants to go congratulate Jamie Barnett. Brent, back to you. All right, Jack. Thank you very much for Gary Danielson and Jack Arruda. I'm Brent Musburger, and we wrap things up here in Atlanta, Georgia, and we think ahead to Georgia Tech and what Gary told you. The rest of the schedule, can they run the table? They host the Georgia Bulldogs here in a big one on the Thanksgiving Day weekend. They go on the road to play Virginia next week. They get a tough game against Clemson, but that, too, will be be back here in Atlanta and of course secondary to that will be Joe Hamilton's pursuit of the Heisman Trophy certainly one of the favorites now and he will be out there Jamie Barnett his good friend and the quarterback on the losing North Carolina State team everybody wishing everybody nothing but the best here in the ACC Georgia Tech and Hamilton have won another one Gary 48 to 21 he did it with it what a Georgia Leary exactly wanted good tackling defense and a continuation of that offense that looks like no one's going to stop it and they salute the student body some of the players with the losing team trudging away but they'll be back came into this game thinking that Georgia Tech might not be quite as good I came away thinking they're a little better than I thought no they're averaging better than 40 points a game and today they had 513 yards of offense. ABC Sports Online, part of ESPN.com, part of the Go Network. So long, everybody. What an extraordinary performance. The Butler Stanley Cup. Well, this is the Indianapolis Best final round ever. Touchdown, touchdown. Incredible. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports, continuing the tradition of excellence.